Okay, friends, 1132. We're tracking uh, very severe storms now that are to the west of the Tulsa Metro. We do have severe storms that are populating southern Pittsburgh County right now. Those storms are moving northeast at about 40, 50 miles per hour, and they're approaching southern, uh, southern sections of McAllister. Heavy, heavy thunderstorm activity here. Quarter, nickel-sized hail, excessive lightning, frequent cloudy ground lightning, 60, 65 mile per hour winds. The stronger storms are located here, and uh, these storms right now are moving from Stillwater, about to enter Pawnee. They're in the western sections of Osage County, and we're very concerned in this area right in through here, from Glencoe to Cushing to Yale to Avery, uh, back down to the Stroud area. 70, near 80 mile per hour winds will be a possibility. And I'll tell you right now that a lot of our local communities' storm siren policy uh, when they see severe thunderstorm warnings with the potential for 80 mile per hour winds are higher, a lot of those storm siren policies will activate. Uh, so not only for tornado warnings, but for high end severe thunderstorm warnings. For example, I know Hominy right now, the storm sirens are sounding because of these uh, severe thunderstorms, the potential for some winds gusting uh, 75 to 80 miles per hour. Uh, there is what we consider to be uh, some kind of a tornado threat with this storm system tonight with some of these, we call these little um, uh, areas, these little bow echoes, these little appendages that are come, sometimes will wrap up inside of these. They're very quick little spin ups here. So we're watching right in through here near Glencoe to Pawnee, also around the Cushing and Yale area. And by the way, uh, Aaron is running the radar here. You see those really bright colors. Those are indicative of extremely high velocities right now. So let's put that reflectivity back on. Uh, Aaron, let's take a look. Uh, let's kind of see what's happening right now with Vaughn, actually, in St Stillwater. You can see just heavy, heavy thunderstorm activity. Uh, we had a 70 mile per hour wind uh, detected in Perkins. Now, that's just a little bit south of Stillwater, but we're talking about significant winds now, 60, 70 miles per hour. The potential for higher end wind gust that could be close to 80 miles per hour with some of that. Uh, so Vaughn is in the heart of that near Stillwater. And again, that storm is moving to the east. So let's go back to the radar and uh, Aaron, let's give a, a track if we can uh, for this portion of the cell. It goes from Pawnee to Yale to Cushing back down to the Chandler area. This is going to be moving eastward. Notice that polygon for severe thunderstorms mornings. We'll take it all the way into Central Creek County. It doesn't take it all the way to Tulsa County, but it's moving into the Tulsa County area. We're just going to extend it a little bit longer, by the way. So this is going to continue on. So Aaron, give us an update on uh, what you know right now with that uh, estimated time of arrival here. Yeah, uh, it's moving off to the east at a pretty rapid pace, around 55 or so miles per hour. And as we take a look at where that's going, we'll go back to radar here real quick and just kind of take a look at that area. We're looking at Yale 1139. So, I mean, that's basically here in the next couple of minutes. It's on Cushing right now. Uh, drum right. Uh, it'll be in your neck of the woods here at around 1139. So pretty quickly it, it's rolling along. Preg 1142, Oilton around 1145, same time for Stroud, and then Boley and Depew around 1151 to 1152. And, and then, then just thereafter, closer to midnight, it'll be moving into the western sections of the metro area. And once again, it's going to bring the potential for 70 to maybe 80 mile per hour winds. Lots of lightning, heavy rain, and then the potential for one or two spin ups is something we'll be watching for as well. And can't rule out some small hail, maybe up to the size of quarters or so. All right, Aaron. And again, our main issue with this is going to be significant winds uh, with this and a lot of lightning as well. So, again, this is just to the west of Tulsa. This is going to move into Tulsa soon. Uh, we also have a severe thunderstorm warning that's uh, still positioned across the southern area. So let's head down south very quickly here. Take a look. This is the Pittsburgh County area. Uh, this is going to be again across far southern sections of Pittsburgh County. Here's McAllister. The core of that cell is still right in through here. And then additional strong cells now are also populating portions of Pushmataw County, uh, the Atoka County area that's moving east northeast as well. That's going to get into the southern sections of the latter and eventually the Floor County vicinity. Uh, so Wilbur, technically you're just a little bit removed from that uh, polygon, but this is going to be moving into your area. So we're going to just encourage everyone in this general region here to prepare for the potential for some severe weather. You can see that severe thunderstorm watch that's posted there, but uh, the actual severe thunderstorm warnings will continue on a little bit longer in this area. So the potential here for some nickel quarter sized tail, extremely electrical system here. 
in the southern areas. Tallahena, Worcester, lots and lots of lightning. And again, this is going to be moving east, northeast. And eventually, the winds right in through here are really going to crank up as well with this storm system. So this is going to be a wind maker as well as it continues to move east, northeast. Let's head back up to the north. Uh, let's take a look again pretty quickly here across the northern areas as we continue to watch these winds uh, crank up. Just had a 52 mile per hour wind now measured uh, near the Stillwater area. So we'll zoom in here. You can see that severe thunderstorm watch. It's okay, Aaron, put it back on if you can. Uh, these counties that are highlighted in blue from Tulsa and Claremore West, that's a severe thunderstorm watch that goes until two o'clock. The counties that are highlighted a little more to the east, that would be right across the Miami J Grove area, Tahlequah. That's a severe thunderstorm watch that goes until four o'clock this morning. So this is gonna be a pretty busy night for us here, unfortunately. You can see all of these icons on the map. Those are trackers that we're tracking this force tonight. Brandon Wells is just ahead of this. Uh, he's in the Scheidler area, four acre uh, Osage County that's moving eastward. Uh, then Vaughn, of course, is in Stillwater near the Yale and Cushing area. Bob Roloff is in the Creek County vicinity, pretty close to Bristow, about to intercept that storm. And then also Sequoia is in, in the southern areas of Lincoln County. And again, all of this is moving eastward. So Aaron, if we'll rack this up and put some motion to it so folks can just kind of see uh, the way that this is uh, moving here. Uh, this is the, we consider this, you know, this is called a bow echo feature. And in this general area right in through here in this configuration, that is where some significant winds uh, will be a possibility. By the way, Sedan, Kansas, from Sedan westward, you're also included in a severe thunderstorm warning now as well. Uh, the same thing here, the winds would be 60, maybe 70 miles per hour, but it looks like, at least initially, that the stronger core of wind is going to be in this storm segment right in through here, generally from the Ralston area back down to Stroud, and that will be moving to the east. John Durkee is also near the metro, uh, so we're going to be tracking this right when it gets a little closer in uh, to the immediate Tulsa County vicinity. So let's kind of set the stage right now. Uh, we do have severe thunderstorm warnings that are underway just a little bit to the west of the metro. So this is going to be South Central Osage County, Creek County, Southern Pawnee, Northwestern Fusky County. Uh, this line is moving again to the east now at about 60 miles an hour. So uh, Aaron, a lot of times when these um, storms start to pick up forward speed and momentum, um, that will also just increase that speed. And so we're already seeing that uh, right now. So if we can, let's go back to check out Vaughn's uh, video right now. He's again in the heart of all of this extremely heavy rain. Is he still not available to talk at this point? I know he's still uh, using okay. News 9 has been using him this evening and, and there's going to be a transfer here pretty soon, but he's still uh, talking to them as far as I know. OK, all righty. So again, he's uh, in some 50, 60, 70 mile per hour winds, heavy, heavy rainfall. You can see those rain curtains uh, that are right in front of him and he is uh, just a little bit to the east now of Stillwater uh, on uh, looks like a 412 and it's moving eastward as well. Uh, so again, uh, you can see we now have severe thunderstorm warnings that are being issued right now for the Tulsa County area. And uh, as those severe thunderstorm warnings are being issued, uh, these are the types of severe thunderstorm warnings uh, that can trigger actual um, storm sirens. They can trigger your phones, your NOAA weather radios. So the potential is going to be here for some significant uh, potentially damaging uh, type winds with this storm system that's going to be getting closer into the area. So uh, we're just going to stay on right now. We'll tell everybody down the line here that uh, we'll start our, our coverage at this point. As these storms are moving to the east at 50 miles per hour, um, we're going to zoom in here and take a look at this bow configuration. Uh, the potential is here. Now, this does not mean that we'll absolutely see this, but the potential is going to be here for some 80 and 90 mile per hour winds. So let's flip that over uh, to velocity and uh, we'll take a look. So all of these pockets of winds that we're starting to see here surging out from this storm system will be moving eastward. And you can see that polygon that is include a large chunk here of northern Tulsa County and then the central part of the county, basically all across the southern areas, goes down through Old Mulgee and then also into Central Creek County as well. So um, the potential is here for some 90 mile per hour winds. You can see Aaron is it's pixel querying some of this data and it's indicating extremely high winds. The radar beam is a little bit off the surface of the earth, so we are measuring some of these wind speeds slightly off the surface, obviously, but we know that some of this is going to mix down. So uh, if you look at the actual verbiage, the tag of the severe thunderstorm warning, it's going to 
scientists say the potential for winds at 90 miles an hour. Obviously, that can be very destructive. So as these thunderstorms start to move generally from the west to the east, now it's 60 miles per hour, we're going to encourage you actually to take precautions like this would be a tornado. So you want to stay away from the western walls and windows and to the interior uh, part of your home here because these are going to be very strong winds that will start to move across the uh, western sections here. Uh, you can see also there's a little enhanced area here between Yale and Wellington Jennings, also a little bit around the Blackburn and Cleveland area here. Aaron, go ahead. We do have the ability now to talk to Vaughn. He has switched over to us and uh, of course he's in that, that medius part of that storm. So he, uh, as far as I know, is available now. Okay, let's put the uh, reflectivity back on. So Vaughn is right here. Vaughn, if you can give us an update, what, what's it been like there in this storm? I mean, it looks like it is just cranking right now with a lot of wind. It's been cranking for a long time, Alan. I'm uh, east of Stillwater now on Highway 51, and uh, I'm not sure how far, probably 10 to 15 miles. But this, this storm has picked up a lot of speed. I have not been able to get back on the lead. Okay, Vaughn. Uh, now go ahead. We just lost you there for a second, but we got you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, sometimes gusts into 60 and 70 miles an hour with this, Alan. So um, everybody needs to bat down the hatches in Yale, Oilton, everything along 51. Uh, just bat it down and step inside because it's coming. Alan. Okay, Vaughn. We, we got the bulk of that there. Thank you very much. Uh, again, this is the track. Um, and again, as we mentioned just a couple of minutes ago, a lot of our local communities have storm siren policies um, that obviously they'll, they'll sound the sirens for tornado warnings, but they also have policies where they'll sound the sirens when the severe thunderstorm warning has the potential for 80 mile per hour winds are higher. So a lot of our communities will do that uh, tonight with these storm cells, including part of the Tulsa County area as well. So uh, the indication is right now that at least the western sections of the county, your storm sirens are probably sounding at this point. Uh, so that would be in the western arm of the Tulsa County area. Storm sirens will be sounding and the, but I would just assume that more than likely as this gets a little closer into the Tulsa County area that the rest of the county, the storm sirens may uh, go off. So. Don't be alarmed if that happens. And I know your phones are triggering right now. Your National Weather Service no radio is triggering as well. And here is the reason why. This is a significant uh, bow echo. This is unfortunately what we were uh, worried about through the day, tracking uh, some of the data here. Uh, this could cause some significant damage all in this polygon shaded area, basically all along this line, but especially right in through here. So uh, here's the Tulsa area, here's Sepulpa, Kiefer Mounds. You've got time right now to take some precautions as the storm cell starts to get closer to you, Bristow as well. Uh, we think it's gonna be here at about 11.58, maybe close to midnight, and it's about 11.44 uh, right now. Broken Arrow, you're gonna be included in this as well. And the anticipation that this is gonna keep going. Uh, we don't see anything that's going to stop this. It may eventually get east of Tulsa and weaken a little bit, but uh, we think that's going to take a long time for that to actually happen. So let's zoom out right now just a little bit more. We'll take a look closer uh, at the entire area because we do have other storms as well. Uh, Osage County, there's Brandon. He's in front of this. Is Brandon available? All right, let's check out Brandon's video right now. And uh, Brandon, give me your location. It doesn't appear that the winds are quite as strong in the northern areas of Osage County, at least from a radar perspective. What can you tell us about that right now? Yeah, Alan, well, right now we're just west of Pahuska here along uh, Highway 60. And uh, we're getting at least 55 gusts to 60 mile an hour winds. Uh, I've recorded 57, but there's been higher gusts than that. Uh, so we're, we're continuing to monitor these, uh, this line as it starts to move off to the east, uh, Alan. Okay, all right, Brandon, thank you. Let's head to Bob Roloff. Now here's Bob's shot. Bob is gonna be right in, along that leading edge of that bow echo. That's the winds we're concerned about. Bob, what do you have right now? Let's take a look at Bob. We're getting about yeah, we're registering 60 mile an hour winds here in Bristow. We just had the uh, metal cart uh, carousel out here in the Walmart parking lot take off and start blowing. Uh, you can see what's going on right now. We've got a lot of stuff blown around out here. We've registered uh, recently 56 miles an hour. Okay, and again, that's just the wind right ahead of the actual component of the rain, which is just slightly behind it. So 
there is a little bit of wind ahead of it, but not much. So just a mile or two ahead of it, of the actual uh, reflectivity core, and then right behind it, the heavy rain will start to show up. And then you got the wind and the rain and the hail behind that uh, and the lightning cores. So this is moving quite, quite fast now. Uh, 60, it, may, it could be moving close to 65, maybe 70 miles per hour. And a lot of times when the storms are moving that fast, you start to see that type of wind very common. And there may be even higher wind speeds uh, located in this, especially right in this core here. Uh, it could be between 80, maybe as high as 90 mile per hour winds. Sequoia is in the southern areas of that uh, storm cell, which is again, here's Stroud. So he's just a little bit south and here's Welty and Bristow. So he again is uh, pretty close. That's the, you see that little green area there? That's the gust front that's ahead of that. So if we can, we'll just take Sequoia shot. Just take a look at his video right now. And again, he is picking up quite a bit of wind as well. So he's looking to the south right now. And that's a westerly wind that's coming in uh, pretty strong. Uh, which he is just a little bit north of uh, Little and south of the Prague area and slightly east of Meeker. So those are all severe storms that are moving back to the east. Let's head back to the radar. Uh, let's straighten that up. And Aaron, let's give another um, estimated time of arrival, especially for the Tulsa Metro here, because now I know that there's a lot of folks that are now tuning in uh, with their cell phones triggering, uh, NOAA weather radios triggering, and even some storm sirens that are now sounding uh, through the area. So we'll zoom in here just a little bit. We'll take a look. That's the severe thunderstorm polygon that's located. And you can see those communities there. Aaron, give us a time of arrival of this uh, pretty significant, potentially dangerous bow echo feature. What do you have for us? Yeah, it is moving along at a rapid clip around 55, maybe up to 60 miles per hour. As you get these strong surges of wind that we're seeing, uh, that can enhance the forward motion of it as well. So here's the latest on some of those timelines uh, as that moves east. It's going to be in Bristow around 1156. So within the next 10 minutes there, it's moving in on Bob. Uh, Cleveland around 1157. That's on the northern end of what we're looking at here. Sepulpa around 1206. Just before that, It'll be on Kellyville just around midnight. Then Kiefer and Mounds around 12, 10 ish. Uh, Glenpool around a similar time. And then we're on into Tulsa. There's Tulsa Hills by around 12, 14 to 12, 15. Same story for Sand Springs. And that's where John is. And, and he's in position to uh, intercept that segment of the line as it moves through as well. Uh, as it rapidly, rapidly moves off to the east with the potential for 80, maybe 90 mile per hour wind gust, some quarter size hail a lot of lightning. So that, that's what we're looking at right now, Alan, uh, and we'll continue to watch this as it uh, rolls off to the east. Yeah, this is, again is um, a pretty significant bow echo here that could cause quite a bit of wind. And we're going to just anticipate that there's going to be some power outage issues with some of this, uh, especially right in this little bow echo region. Boy, I tell you, that looks like some pretty meaty wind right there. Let's go ahead and pixel clear. Let's take a look. Again, the, the radar beam is up a little off the surface. Uh, so it's going to measure anywhere between 80, 90, maybe 100 mile per hour winds. But again, not all of that makes it down. Some of it will. Uh, so you can see Aaron is kicking uh, all of these off here, 70, 80, maybe a 90 mile per hour gust and some of that. And this is all generally moving to the east. So let's clear that. I do also want to go back down south. We still have severe thunderstorm warnings that are underway in the Pittsburgh, Latimer, LaFleur County area. Uh, we told you a couple of minutes ago that was continuing to advance to the east northeast. And now this is a severe thunderstorm warning that's now issued. Latimer, LaFleur County, Red Oak, Wilberton, all the way up into Haskell County. This is moving east northeast at about 30, 40 miles per hour. Uh, we've got uh, nickel, quarters and nickel sized hail in some of the stronger cores. Uh, flip that over if you could very quickly to the, the button there, uh, Aaron. We'll take a look at the, the hill there, especially right in through here south of Red Oak, southwest of Worcester. Lots and lots of lightning. The wind potential here, not quite as strong as those winds that are west of Tulsa. We still could have some damage sporadically with some 60 and 65 mile per hour winds. Again, that's moving east, northeast, back to the metro. Uh, we'll take a look. And again, we also have a hail threat with some of this out to the west, but the hail threat is not the main issue right now. The main issue is the wind. We still may have some nickel quarter sized hail in some of this heavy, heavy rainfall, but the wind is the bigger deal. Severe thunderstorm warnings now. You can see the polygons that are up and running. That's a severe thunderstorm warning. And by the way, to the north, I think that polygon is no longer in effect across portions of northern Osage County at this point. It, it is. It's just right on the county line now. Right on the county line. Yeah. Oh, oh, yep. Okay, I see that. Good call. Good catch right there. Right on the county line. So that continues on right across. There it is. You see that? Just right on the line. So Bartlesville, heads up. You're coming up next. 
the Skytook area, Tulsa, Sepulpa, back down to the um, central sections of Creek County. So let's zoom in here and take a look. We want to give the heads up to around Sepulpa, uh, Manford, Keystone, Olive, uh, and now Western Tulsa County. Uh, folks in Glenpool, Bixby, Jinx, Broken Arrow, downtown Tulsa, Midtown, you should all make your preparations now for this storm cell as it's going to barrel into the area very quickly. It's moving east at about 60 miles per hour and the potential is for quite a bit of uh, wind damage and uh, power outages. Uh, some hail, some very strong winds are indicated just to the east of where Vaughn is located. Uh, you can see Bob in Bristol. Let's check out um, Bob's video. Bob, give us an update. What kind of winds do you have right now as you're still right along that leading edge of that, that significant low echo? Alan, we're still getting big time on our gusts up here. Uh, we got power out on the north side of Bristol. We're going to try and follow the leading edge of that back to the east towards the Pulver right now. But uh, we've had a lot of stuff blowing around up here, so it's a uh, high likelihood we have some trees down. We do got the emergency responders going to a tree on the person up in the oil area. So this has got some deadly, potentially very dangerous. Okay, Bob, appreciate it. Uh, let's check out Vaughn Caster's video. Again, he is back behind that leading edge. He's in between Yale, south of Jennings, just a little bit west of Manford. Um, Vaughn, I don't know if you can hear us with all of that rain. What do you, what's your wind like right now, Vaughn? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting constant 50 to 60 mile an hour gusts um, from the northwest, uh, which is driving that rain kind of right in the same direction I'm driving, so it makes it a very difficult drive, uh, not to mention all the, the deep areas of water on the road, because there's been torrential rains with this, and with the wind, there's lots of limbs and leaves and stuff like that. There's a tree right there I just passed uh, down on the westbound lane of 51. So um, there's going to be sporadic tree damage along 51. If you're traveling this road, you've got to be careful because uh, it can uh, get up on you in, in no time, Alan. But we're going to try to stay right in behind this and uh, get back with you with any more information. Back to you. All right. We appreciate it. Let's check out the radar again. We're going to even get track on the radar on these significant storms as they're moving in. And there's John Durkee. We're going to just check in with John uh, just to make sure that we're all good and go in here with John on his shot in his audio because he's going to be up pretty quickly with these storms. They're moving uh, to the east now. What about 55, 60 miles an hour? All right, Aaron, give us an estimated time of arrival as it gets closer into the central part of Tulsa County. Yeah, they're moving once again very rapidly off to the east. Uh, Cleveland, basically in the next couple of minutes. Kellyville, 1159. So you got about five minutes there. Manford, same story. Uh, Sepulpa by 1205. Kiefer 1208. We're looking at Glenpool and Tulsa Hills between 1210 and 1215. Jinx right in that same boat. And then ORU uh, by 1216 and Beggs by 1218. We are getting reports now that uh, some sirens are going off across parts of the metro uh, around the Midtown area, I believe. Uh, so if you're hearing those, that's for these strong winds that are blowing into Tulsa that could be in the range of 80, maybe 90 miles per hour. Uh, there could be some small hail. There would be a quite a bit of lightning as well. Uh, and all up and down this line, even if you're not in the metro, if you're up towards Bartlesville, down towards uh, Okima, you're going to get, you know, 60 plus miles per hour winds with this more than likely. It's just this real boat out section is the most intense right now. Uh, and, and we're having this areas that are getting some sirens that have been set off as a result of this moving through. All right, very good there, Aaron. So again, Broken Arrow, Bixby, Mounds, Bags, Tulsa, Owasso, uh, Skytook, you're going to be in the running for this as well. This is moving east pretty quickly. Let's very fast to go up to the north for our friends and neighbors in the Osage County area. We'll check out Osage County. Let's check out Osage County. And there's Brandon near Pawhuska. Let's check out Brandon Wells. Brandon, uh, tell us what's going on there with the thunderstorms around the Pawhuska vicinity right now. Yeah, Alan, well, right now we just went through Pawhuska and uh, Pawhuska was uh, periodically without power. I do believe it did come back on, but when we were going through downtown Pawhuska along 60, it was uh, completely dark. We took a measured wind gust of 62 miles an hour uh, in the town of Pahuska, or just west of Pahuska. And uh, right now we're going to make our way up to the north, Allen, and uh, we're just getting some um, some light to moderate rain and some very strong winds. So uh, anybody in the town of Pahuska needs to take these uh, storms very serious. 
All right, we appreciate that, Brandon. All right, let's go back into the city of Tulsa right now. And as we've told you uh, earlier, some of our communities have storm siren policies uh, that will sound the sirens uh, in addition to tornadoes, when severe thunderstorms may have the potential to produce what we call these high end winds between 80 and 90 miles an hour. So some of the sirens are sounding. We know that we have siren, uh, the sirens sounding in the western Tulsa County area. Now Owasso is sound, uh, sounding and also Jinx. Uh, so w this is going to be very common uh, through the next half hour or so as this, especially this Bow Echo region moves eastward because this is where the potential for some destructive winds could be. Uh, there's what's called a tag or a piece of information on the severe thunderstorm warnings and that tag is indicating that the wind speeds may be as high as 80 to 90 miles per hour in spots. So you can see this is the velocity data that we look at and again the velocity is a little bit removed from the surface but it's going to indicate and Aaron you don't have to pixel it up here but it's going to indicate very high winds right now. Um, 80 maybe 90 mile per hour winds and some of this and again this is Boeing eastward. It's moving east very very rapidly so right along one 117 from Sepulpa back up to Manfred on Highway 412 on 51 and then from Lake Keystone all the way over. Just to see how that just kind of just shot over like that. I mean, that's what we're going to be seeing these winds just really rushing into uh, the Tulsa Metro. John Durkee is uh, ahead of this. Now he's just a couple of miles away from that actual Bow Echo area there. Uh, so let's just look at his shot right now. I know he's not going to have too much of anything. Um, but we just kind of look to see if the trees are starting to move yet. They're not. Uh, so John kind of hang in there. We're going to come to you in just a minute or two. As soon as you start to get those, uh, those winds starting to pick up, let Jalen know because we want to get uh, you on immediately as those winds start to get closer into your location. He's just a little bit west of the downtown area near Sand Springs. So John, we appreciate you being out. Uh, let's go back to the radar. Again, we have severe thunderstorm warnings. These are severe thunderstorm warnings, uh, but they're the high end severe thunderstorm warnings that are underway. Uh, so th these warnings can have the potential for some very destructive winds. Um, and what usually will happen, uh, we're, we're kind of now in, in the phase of especially this segment right here, that when we start to see those types of winds and the velocity, it usually means the whole thing is moving pretty fast as well. So we're going to anticipate that this now, Aaron, is moving east at about 70 miles an hour. Uh, so um, let's flip on the live radar, for example, and let's take a look. Uh, we'll, we'll put on live radar and again, so it's just a little bit east of where the actual uh, uh, reflectivity is going to be located. So this is quickly moving into Sepulpa, Kiefer and Mounds just in a couple of minutes from now. Uh, downtown Tulsa, TIA, that's Tulsa International, Broken Arrow, Bixby. Uh, you got to all be prepared for this. And you see this little kink right in through here. We're going to be watching here for maybe a quick little spin up. Uh, we don't see that right now, but that's the reflectivity would indicate that's a possibility. We'll go back to the other radar uh, when we show you those velocities, by the way. So again, that's moving eastward. Uh, we're not going to leave the metro very, uh, very long, but I do need to quickly, Aaron, go back down to southern Oklahoma because those wind speeds are picking up. Just looked at the radar velocity. So right now we're going to call these winds potentially close to 65 and 70 mile per hour winds. Red Oak, eastward, Hevener, uh, the Poto area, this is moving east northeast. The potential here, now the wind speeds are up even higher. 65, 70 mile per hour winds, nickel quarter size tail, extremely uh, electrical storm system here that is moving east northeast. Pittsburgh County, no longer included in that severe thunderstorm warning. All right, back to the metro. Significant storms now are moving in. Uh, so this is just a little bit west of the downtown area. This extends all the way back down into western sections of Creek County uh, and then also the Mulgee County area. Let's check out Sequoia's video right now. Again, he is in the very southern part of the stronger part of the core near the Bowley vicinity, uh, near Prague. And you can see he's in just a lot of wind and some rain. Uh, doesn't look like he's got a whole lot going on right now, but those storms are continuing to move to the east. So let's go back to the radar. Let's go back into the metro. By the way, I want to let you know that we are now simulcasting on our radio stations here in the metro. Uh, so that's just another avenue for you to be able uh, to gain maybe some information if you start to lose some power here and there. We're also, I'm sure we're streaming. Uh, so you can also take a look at that at newson6.com, our, our social media pages as well. But uh, you're listening to us now on uh, 1170 AM. You're listening to us on The Bull. 
Uh, you're listening to us uh, on uh, Big Country 99.5. So all across the board here, uh, we're, we're up and running, to preparing for these storms that are continuing to move through uh, the Tulsa Metro. So let's kind of set the stage here. If you're just now joining us because your storm sirens are going off in your local community, uh, maybe uh, your phone is triggering. Uh, with these severe thunderstorm warnings, we do have what are considered to be very significant severe storms that are located very close to the Tulsa Metro. They're moving east at about 70 miles per hour, and we're going to use the term of uh, the potential for some destructive winds as these storms move eastward now at about 70 miles an hour. So let's zoom in. Uh, let's take a look. Um, let's go to uh, Bob's shot right now, Bob's video in between Kellyville in the Hayburn area. Bob, roll off, give us an update. What do you have, Bob? Hey, Al, we're still getting five on our foot when you can see it's just driving in the rain. Visibility is extremely poor. Uh, we've seen off and on power flashes out here. So we're quite certain we're getting the power lines down, uh, our trees to the power lines. It's like the uh, water is coming over the top of the wall here. Okay, Bob. All right. We appreciate it. Um, again, getting closer in now. Sepulpa, uh, Prattville, Sand Springs, Oakhurst, uh, the Kiefer area mounds. Dow Archer is near Kellyville. And whenever Dow is ready, uh, we can pop up Dow here in a second. You guys just let me know when he is ready to go. Um, I think he is ready. All right. So if we can take a look at Dell and he is on 33. Is that correct? This is a late addition. So he may be on rim 33. We'll check this out in just a minute, but you can see Dell is right there in the middle. Uh, there's also John Durkee that is near Prattville and Sand Springs. So he's just about to get into those uh, heavy, strong potential winds as well. Uh, Glenpool and Jinx and Tulsa Hills and Brickside. So again, this is that significant surge of wind uh, that we've been concerned about. Your storm sirens are sounding in many of our communities across uh, the, uh, the Tulsa County area. Um, policy on some of the storm sirens are for tornado, but also policy between 80 and 90 mile per hour destructive winds. So that is a possibility and that's why those storm sirens are sounding. So this is all moving east pretty quickly. So folks from Tulsa, Brickside, Tulsa Hills, Jinx, Glenpool, Hakey Creek, Bixby, Broken Arrow, all along this leading edge. You need to prepare for the potential for these types of winds to roll through the area. Uh, so Aaron, if you can give us an update here on the estimated time of arrival, especially this segment. Let's just go all the way from Keystone Lake right back down to the Bow Echo area. We'll take it down into Southern Creek County. Give me an estimated time of arrival, please. Yeah, these are really moving fast. In fact, some of our storm trackers are having trouble keeping up with this section of the storm as it moves east. So let's go ahead and go to radar uh, so we can go ahead and get this storm track on. Actually, I'm going to have to redo that. Uh, but we have this uh, storm. We're going to track it from Keystone Lake uh, all the way down to areas just west of Biggs. We're going to move this east, and we're going to say it's moving around 65 miles per hour. And as we uh, take a look at where that's heading, uh, Sepulpa, it's moving on you right now. Uh, Prattville and Mounds, 1205, 1206. Same story for Sand Springs, Berry Hill. A couple of minutes after that, by around 1209, 1210, we're looking at that in Glenpool, also near Daniel Webster High School. Uh, Tulsa Hills by around 1210. And then uh, uh, Central High School there, uh, just northwest of downtown, we're looking at that at around 1212. And then eastward from there, uh, you know, you'd be looking at Broken Arrow, Catuso, Wasso, probably 15 to 20 minutes after that. These are mo moving very rapidly, uh, potential for 80 or, or so mile per hour winds, maybe even more uh, in localized areas, lots of lightning, heavy rain, maybe some small hail, but the wind is really the main deal with these as they crank on off to the east uh, around 60 or more miles per hour. Okay. Hey, uh, Aaron, if we could zoom out very quickly, clear that. I want to take you down to the Eufaula area. Now this is pretty interesting here. Right in through this area, you can see the storms are not in the Eufaula vicinity right here. But what we're seeing is winds coming off of these areas rolling through the McIntosh County area. We can see that on the mezzanine 50, maybe some 60 mile per hour winds. So Shakota, Eufaula, Crowder, Hannah, 
uh, the Warner area. You've got strong environmental winds right now that are rolling into this region here. Uh, on the Oklahoma Mesonet, we've got 40 and 50, almost 60 mile per hour wind gusts right in this area. So again, that's from near Crowder to Eufaula, to Shakota, to Warner, to Porham. Even though there's no storm right here, because of the storms nearby and the thermal properties of the atmosphere and how this all works with pressure differences, you got strong winds that are rolling across part of the Lake Eufaula area. Let's head back to the north. Let's head back to the north. Let's go to Bob first. We'll go to Bob first, and then we'll follow Bob with Dow. Oh my goodness, Bob, tell me what you have there. Hey, Alan, we just recorded 75 mile an hour gusts here on the current current bike. Lights are off, we can get the power flashes out here, so I don't know if this is a straight line way to take down power lines, but we've got something else. Like I said, we got a good reading from 75 miles an hour. You can Okay, and again, folks, we uh, just kind of bear with us on the audio because there's so much wind and rain, it may be difficult to hear, but he's got 75 mile per hour winds. Dow Archer is now up with us as well. Dow is just a little bit ahead of that in Kellyville. And if we can, let's check out Dow. Let's pull up Dow. He's Rim 23. Dow, we appreciate you being with us this morning. What do you have for us, Dow? Alan, we're taking about 75 mile an hour winds out here on 66. We're actually having trouble keeping the car on the road. We just had a power flash about two miles back. We're on 66 now between Kellyville and Sepulveda. Big power flash. I uh, just had another power flash immediately off to our right. All right, Dal, we appreciate it. Let's go back to the radar. We're going to pick up John Durkee here in just a second. And by the way, you know, we're talking about those wind velocities, 70, 80, possibly 90 mile per hour. Just got a report of a 90 mile per hour wind. What was that, Aaron? Give us that report. Yeah, a local storm spotter there uh, about three miles east of Manford, uh, a train spotter report thunderstorm wind gust of around 90 miles per hour. That was an estimate, but they, they're estimating that to be around that, that threshold. There you go. So again, that's why those sirens are sounding right now. All right, let's go to John Durkee. Uh, he is ahead of the actual rain, but getting closer into the wind. John, uh, give us an update here. What's the wind like your location? Tell us, please. Right now, the wind is not that strong where I am on I-44 coming up on uh, uh, Highway 75, but we've seen numerous uh, flashes of uh, power uh, over Sepulpa and back over the Prattville Sand Springs area as the line of strong winds moves into the Tulsa Metro. Back to you, Alan. Okay, we appreciate it uh, very much. Thank you very much there, uh, John. Uh, Durkee. So let's take a look. Uh, let's go back and let's set the stage just very quickly. Big radar scope. Um, take a look. And again, significant severe weather about to move into the heart of the Tulsa County vicinity. Now, severe thunderstorm warnings are extended all the way into portions of Washington County. Bartlesville, you're coming up soon. Northern Rogers County. Eventually, Claremore will be included, but not at this particular moment. Northern uh, Rogers County, Talala, northward, Craig County, Nawada. This will continue to march on eastward at about 60 to 70 miles per hour. Again, Eufaula, McIntosh County. Um, you're in between these storm cells, but there's a process in the atmosphere that's causing very strong winds to roll across the Lake Eufaula vicinity right now. So we've got strong winds rolling across the Lake Eufaula vicinity, uh, possibly as far south as Crowder, maybe as far north as the southern areas of Muskogee County because of some thermal properties, uh, th uh, thermal properties in the atmosphere and the pressure differences in between some of these storm cells. Now back into the metro. Back into the metro. Let's kind of zoom in here and take a look. That's going to be getting, let's go straight in here, Aaron, if we can. Uh, this is going to be now getting closer into Jinx. Uh, and again, this is something that we're also, we were, we're kind of concerned about is that the storms were going to be moving so fast that our trackers will eventually not be able to catch up with that leading edge. So we're going to be very close to that here soon. Uh, so from Tulsa Hills to Glenpool, uh, in fact, if we'll take the Jinx camera here soon, and uh, take a look at that in a minute. Uh, that would be T6. Uh, we'll be able to see the impact of the wind as it starts to push through. Uh, but so from Glenpool to Tulsa Hills, to the Brickside, this is all moving eastward. You need to take your storm precautions right now, uh, moving eastward. The potential here for 70, 80, maybe some 90 mile per hour wind gust. Uh, that could cause some significant wind damage issues in spots. Uh, so this is gonna continue to move on here. 
uh, eastward. We, we don't see anything that's really going to cause this to weaken in the short term, probably in the next hour. So if you're watching, for example, near Coeta or Stone Bluff or uh, east of the Creek Nation Turnpike around Fair Oaks or Gregory eastward, this is going to move in your direction as well. Uh, so Glenpool right now, Jinx, winds should be picking up out of the west very strong. You want to stay away from the western walls and windows. You want to stay away from uh, exterior walls and windows. Basically, interior room is your home. Interior storm shelter, if you have that, as these thunderstorms start to roll through the area. So uh, Brookside, Tulsa, Turley, all right in through here. Lots of lightning, lots of thunder. There's some hail with this, uh, maybe some nickel quarters, but our main issue is going to be the winds. Uh, Aaron, let's uh, pixel query that was tailing the wind speeds now as we continue to move in closer to the metro. Tell us what you see there. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put a few of these on here, and we're looking mainly from areas around Keystone Lake. We'll start popping these on here through Sand Springs, uh, and we're getting readings, and this is elevated. This is a bit off the surface, uh, but these are pretty impressive uh, wind readings here. I mean, uh, this is a little, once again, we're, we're probably a few hundred feet above the ground, but uh, winds nearing 100 miles per hour in a few locations. Uh, it might be a little less than that by the time it gets to the surface, but I mean, even if it's a little bit less, we're still talking about winds 80, maybe 90 miles per hour, you know, around the Prattville or Sand Springs area, uh, possibly translating to the surface. And we've seen some reports uh, back near Manford that would verify potentially those type of numbers if that is the case. But that'll be moving eastward. So, you know, right over downtown towards Midtown, down towards Brookside. That's uh, that's kind of the area we're going to be seeing that 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 main area move through even down towards Tulsa Hills and Jinx. Uh, so uh, here very shortly within the next 10 to 20 minutes, uh, that's going to be overtaking much of the city of Tulsa, Alan, as it moves off to the east. Okay, um, I tell you what, let's uh, pull up some of our tower cameras if we can here in the metro. Um, we'll take a look uh, and, and we might be able to do that through, through our system as well. We'll just kind of see here. Um, we'll take a look at uh, T6, that would be Jinx, and we'll take a look here also at the downtown area. So I believe this is T6 right now. Uh, so this is going to be the Jinx area. So the winds are picking up in Jinx quite a bit. This is the live look from Jinx. Strong winds out of the west now, uh, 60, 70, maybe 80 mile per hour winds. We could see some gusts that would be near 90 miles an hour. Uh, let's check out Bob Roloff in his shot, please. Let's go to Bob Roloff. Bob, your location, if you can't tell us exactly where you're at and the winds you're experiencing right now. Hey, Alan, we're still getting buffeted by 55-plus mile-an-hour winds, but we've also heard multiple reports of people trapped due to trees falling into houses. So this is a very dangerous situation. We're getting a lot of uh, off-and-on power out here, and I expect we're going to have a lot of power outages and a lot of tree damage when this passes through. Back to you, Alan. Okay, all right. Uh, Stephen Aarons is just now into the office as well. He just reported some power flashes, powers, power flashes in the downtown area. So if uh, we can take a look at, at T5, there you go. That's through the downtown. You can see that right on the, uh, the southern edge of the, of the camera there. Those are flashes, yeah. Those are power flashes that are taking place right now. That means the winds are rolling into the area quite a bit. Uh, severe thunderstorm warnings, of course, are coming in here. Uh, with these really strong winds that are underway. There's another flash there, uh, 60, 70, maybe close to 90 mile per hour winds. Let's uh, take a look at the radar. Uh, so Aaron is, is using a product on the radar that shows us where these really strong winds are located. So if we'll take a look at the radar um, and, uh, and we'll uh, pull up uh, links one and uh, we'll show you where that uh, storm is located here. There you go, thank you. Uh, so here's a jinx, and there is it kind of bowing back around from Keystone Lake right into this area, and there's some really strong winds all along this line here that's pushing off to the east uh, very quickly, 60, 70 miles per hour. Uh, so there's Bob Shot, uh, Dow Archer is, uh, is still with us right now. Uh, we'll check out Dow shot in just a second. Also, John Durkee. Let's go back to John if we can, uh, because he's now very close into the Jinx area. He's positioned. Oh, yeah, winds are picking up, John. What do you have for us? Yes. We're, we're at 51st and Lewis and extremely strong winds. I would estimate 65 to 70 miles an hour. Power intermittent. Just had another power flash to the west towards ORU. Very lights going in and out right in the middle of it, Alan. Back to you. Okay, all right. These are destructive winds that are coming through. Now, I want to tell you, 
our friends at the Weather Service now are, are issuing what are called these tags that tell us about the winds. We may have winds at 90, maybe close to 100 miles an hour. Uh, so again, 90 close to 100 miles per hour with some of these winds that are going to be rolling through the area. That's going to cause power outages. That's going to cause some wind damage. Uh, again, if you're in a mobile home in this particular area, especially to the east of this Bow Echo, uh, if you have an uh, opportunity to, to maybe take shelter in a sturdier location, we would encourage you to do that as well. I mean, there, obviously there's nothing wrong with living in a mobile home, but because they're mobile, they're light, and uh, these types of winds will uh, not be favorable for those types of shelters, of course. So this is uh, the new severe thunderstorm warning. Now that's ahead of this. Again, this is going to keep on moving eastward. So this is moving east, and we think it's moving at almost 70 miles an hour. Uh, so uh, again, I know that you've probably already been watching this morning because of these storms getting closer to us, but now we know that there's probably a lot of other folks that are coming on board with us because your storm sirens may be sounding in these communities, your telephones are going off, your NOAA weather radios are going off. Aaron Reese, give us another uh, update here on where this is going and uh, how quickly is it going to get to places like Broken Arrow and Inola and Shoto. Yeah, it's moving pretty rapidly. Once again, 60 plus miles per hour. Wind speeds 80, maybe 90 miles per hour along the leading edge of this. So it's it's packing quite a punch, and that that'll cause a significant amount of damage uh, in in really anywhere that it impacts. So as this rolls eastward, I expanded the the area we're looking at a bit further to the north. That that northern little section there looks like it has intensified just a bit, and I've noticed some some higher wind readings there around Keystone uh, Lake up to the north from there. Uh, so Sky Took on the northern into that by 1225. That's here within the next 10 minutes. We're looking at Sperry around the same time. Tulsa International Airport around 1229 to 1230. Same story for Owasso, Coweta, Catoosa by about 1235. And then Uluga, uh, it'll be moving in on you by around 1240. And same points areas just directly south of you as well. So that's kind of what we're looking at on the time frame of this. It'll rock in. It'll have really strong winds. And, and you can see actually it just updated since I made that. And it already moved about five miles in the time that that just updated. So this kind of shows you how fast that's moving. You'll see the back end of the little the little track that I put on there and it's moved within one update five miles beyond that. So uh, pretty impressive as this rolls on off to the east and, and it should pack quite a punch as it does so. Yeah, these are destructive winds. The potential for destructive winds here uh, could be anywhere between 60, maybe maybe near 100 miles per hour in spots now. Uh, so again, this is com continue to move east. We already have word now of at least 1300 customers without power. We think those numbers are going to come up as well. Dow Archer uh, is uh, right along 44 in uh, the uh, Creek County area near Sepulpa. Uh, let's check out Dow shot in his information. What do you have, Dow? Alan, things have calmed down a lot. We're still taking probably 60 mile hour winds, but uh, Right outside of Sepulpa, between Kelvin and Sepulpa, we were getting at least 80, 85 mile an hour winds, and we've been dodging a lot of storm debris in the road, so I know there's got to be a lot of damage, down trees, things like that. We're headed into Sepulpa right now. Obviously, we can't stay caught up with it, but we're going to do what we can do, do the best we can here, and also start keeping an eye out for quite a bit of damage. Back to you, Alan. All right. We appreciate it, Dow. Again, um, winds now that could be anywhere uh, along this entire line. Uh, let's zoom out very quickly, Aaron, here. That, that entire line could be anywhere between 60 and 70 mile per hour winds, but especially right in through here. That's the apex of the bow. We're anticipating those winds could be uh, any. Oh, did you see that power flash there? That was downtown Tulsa. Downtown Tulsa. That's not Bartlesville. That's downtown Tulsa. Let's just put that up uh, big time here. Uh, let's just put it up. Uh, put downtown T5 up if you can. There it is. So those winds are really coming in right now strong. Uh, 80, 90, we may be having 100 mile per hour winds rolling through the metro. Um, 80, 90, maybe near 100 mile per hour winds rolling through the metro. Uh, also, our friends in Haskell County, McIntosh, Southern Omalgi, Muskogee, Southeastern Olafusky County. Uh, your NOAA weather radio, your phones are triggering. You now have severe thunderstorm warnings that are going to be underway. That will now officially include the Eufaula, Lake Eufaula area. Storms to the west will be getting closer to you. So again, you can see those winds are just really uh, just hammering uh, the city right now through the area. Let's go to, um, let's check out uh, John. Well, I think we just lost John Durkee's shot, right? And our power is flickering here as well uh, at the News on 6. I think John Durkee might be up now. 
Uh, we're having, again, some power issues. You can imagine that all through the area. Okay, let's check it out, John. Oh, he just lost his shot as well. Uh, let's go now, let's zoom back in here and let's take a look. Severe thunderstorm warnings do remain. So we'll see these lines of storms that are continuing to move eastward at 70 miles an hour. Folks from Broken Arrow to Coweta to Haskell uh, to the Porter, Taft, Wagner uh, area, Muskogee, now you're included, Fort Gibson, Shoto, all in through this area. This is a dangerous bow echo configuration. Uh, we don't have any kind of official tornado warnings, but we have winds tornado-like uh, in this storm cell that are continuing to move to the east. Uh, let's flip those velocities on real fast here. Let's take a look and see what they're looking like. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, right in through here. Look at those winds right there. Brookside, Tulsa, Tulsa Hills. Those are really high winds that are going on here. Uh, 70, 80, 90 mile per hour winds. Go ahead, Aaron. So we have a measured, uh, measured 75 mile per hour wind gust from a trained experienced spotter near I-244 and Gilcrease Museum Road. So that's, okay. that's that area we're looking at there. Right in through here. Yeah. Right in through here. Yeah. So those uh, winds are really cranking up. Uh, we're trying to get John Durkee's shot back up. Um, we're having issues with that right now. I mean, he's in the heart of the, and that might be weather related. Uh, but we're, we're trying to see that right now. Uh, there's Bob Roloff shot. Let's check out Bob. He's still in some of that strong wind right now, just a little bit west of Tulsa Hills on 44, about to move back into closer to the, uh, the metro. So, Bob, give me an update. What do you have? Hey, Alan. Uh, we noticed uh, as we're coming into Sepulpa, it looks like the west side of Sepulpa was totally without power. Uh, we're playing, uh, I don't know what this is up here, in the construction zone. We've got these big barrels blowing all over the place up here, so we're having to play dodge. Uh, we're still getting 45, 50 mile an hour gusts as we come in on the west side of Tulsa. Uh, a couple minutes ago, we had a couple power flashes, so there's still being uh, power outages occurring. Back to you. All right, we appreciate it. Um, again, destructive winds moving through the metro. This is going to cause wind damage, power outages. It's moving eastward now. We think at about 70 miles an hour. Uh, so from Sepulpa, Jinx, Glenpool, Bixby, Broken Arrow, uh, the, the Verticris community, Claremore, Inola, Shoto, it's all moving in your direction here. Uh, let's flip the reflectivity back on, Aaron. Uh, let's go up to Bartlesville very quickly. Uh, take a look again. Oshaleta, Bartlesville, Brandon. Brandon, are you still with us right now? Brandon, give me an update. What kind of winds you have right now near Bartlesville? Okay, yeah, Alan, so we just made our way uh, east of Bartlesville. Uh, we're not getting the winds that your guys are getting down there. I would say they're probably anywhere from 45 to 55 mile an hour uh, up here uh, along 60 just east of Bartlesville. Uh, and uh, right now we're just trying to stay out of main, uh, out ahead of the main line to get a good reading, Alan. Okay, all right. We appreciate that. Again, no water, Uliga, Delaware, the Lenapal area. Oh. That's actually what we're using right now, uh, Aaron. Uh, we'll pull that back up here in just a second. There you go. We'll take a look at the radar from Oshaleta to a uh, the Skytook area. That again is moving eastward. Um, Jalen, we'll center that up and let's take the radar and put it right back down on the metro again and zoom it in here. Uh, severe storms. These are potentially destructive winds. Broken Arrow, Catusa. All right, John Durkee is back up right now. Let's check out John's video. And let's uh, pull up John. John, give us an update where you're at. What do you have? I'm at 21st and uh, uh, I guess 101st East Avenue. Very strong wind. And we've got uh, torrential rain. Uh, lots and lots of power flashes, Alan. A lot of folks without power this evening. And uh, that's going to continue with these very gusty winds. Extremely hard to hold on to the steering wheel and and move through. I'm coming up at 101st and uh, Mingo right now, and uh, 101st and 21st rather. And you can see the traffic lights here are out, and uh, it's that way all over town. Back to you. All right, all right, John. Appreciate it. Uh, be careful, everybody. Be careful out there. Obviously, we're we're encouraging you to stay home, of course. Okay. Uh, but uh, we're, we've got our trackers out right now that are trying to, to keep you up to date on this as these storms are moving eastward. So we're just kind of centered right now through the heart of the metro, Hakey Creek, Bixby, Broken Arrow, NSU. It's all moving eastward. You got lots of wind that's moving through the area. Uh, let's check out, who do we need to go to? What do you think? Bob. Bob. Let's check out Bob Roloff yeah. and his shot. Bob, your exact location and what do you have? Alan, we're on I-44 coming up to 49th West Avenue. 
We got debris all over the interstate. Uh, back about 56 West Avenue, westbound traffic is completely shut down. From what we can tell, it looks like semi truck was blown over. But we had so much wind and rain, it's hard to tell. But the westbound lanes are shut down before you get on the Turner Turnpike out there, where it merges with uh, 66 going into Sepulpa. Back to you. Okay, Bob, appreciate it. And again, lots of power outages. We're getting reports of uh, people hearing explosions, you know, uh, transformers that are having issues. Uh, that's that's more than likely what most of that is, is doing. Uh, let's zoom out the radar just a little bit here. Uh, this is the next one in line. Now, these are the more destructive winds in this polygon. We're going to take a look at all of these severe thunderstorm warnings that we have in just a second, but especially right in through here. This is going to be up next. Haskell, Coeta, uh, Catoosa, Claremore, near prior Shoto, south on 69 Wagner, and all the way back down to the Muskogee area. We want you to take your precautions. These storms are moving east at about 70 miles per hour. They've had a history of 70, 80, 90 mile per hour winds. There might be a wind gust in here that could be from 90 to 100, but we're pretty safe in saying 70 to 80 mile per hour winds are likely with this. Could be some higher end wind gusts with this as he continues to move to the east. John has nothing. All right, John Durkee. Let's uh, head to John Durkee. He's really right in the heart of this now near the broken every vicinity. John, give us an update. Right now, we've got extremely strong winds, debris all over Highway 169. Traffic is stopped southbound at uh, 31st Street. The power is out in this area, and uh, traffic is moving extremely slow. Lots of cars up under the bridges where they cannot, uh, cannot I guess, are trying to seek safety. Power lines down right now. You can see those right in front of me uh, on uh, on. Uh, 31st Street at uh, 169, and the extremely strong winds are still coming through the area. Back to you. Yeah, look at that. Uh, look, just keep that shot up right now. You see those winds whipping through there. Uh, those winds, really strong power outages. You can see that the, the uh, uh, outages are there. The lines are down, power lines are down. Uh, so that is something that we're going to be dealing with as well. So just keep in mind, there's going to be a lot of power lines down. Uh, through the metro here. So we'll encourage you to stay hunkered down, stay in your safe spot, even after these storms pass. If you do go outside to check out your property, uh, you want to remain aware here uh, that there's going to be a lot of, of wind issues and power lines down. Um, we're getting reports now. What is this? 31st and Peoria. Estim this is estimated. This is estimated. 31st Peoria area estimated 100 mile per hour winds. All right, let's go to the radar first. Take a look again, uh, anywhere along this bow echo feature right in through here, destructive wind potential. Take your precautions right now. Dow Archer, Dow, give me an update. If you can, what do you have? Yeah, Alan, we just came through that same similar area where Bob was around 49th West Avenue, and I believe we'll block that highway with a sign has blown down, a street sign, one of the big overhead signs. And I think I also saw roof damage there off to our right at one of the businesses. We're going to try to get turned around here and see what else we can find out. It looks like there was pretty extensive damage in that area. All right, all right, appreciate it. Uh, there's the radar. You can see we've got Tulsa on the screen. Uh, that is the downtown camera. There's a shot from Sepulpa. Um, and again, these are just destructive winds that are rolling through the area. Uh, just had a, a rep an estimated report, estimated of close to 100 mile per hour winds uh, that were rolling through 31st in Peoria. And that was, what, about four minutes ago. Uh, so again, this is a significant wind storm that's pushing through. Uh, we do have new additional severe thunderstorm warnings that are now being posted. So here's what we're just going to just uh, zoom the radar out just a little bit, Aaron. Um, and we're going to show you this area right in through here. Now, this is the severe storm. We don't need to go here, but this is the severe storm near the Poto area that's going to move into Fort Smith soon. 60, 70 mile per hour winds. Uh, the pressure gradient, the differences, the thermal properties about 30 minutes ago, you had strong winds rolling over Lake Eufaula, just environmental winds. Now you have a severe thunderstorm warning because of this storm that may clip part of that area. So we do now have severe thunderstorm warnings that are officially in effect now. The northern half of Pittsburgh County, the southern sections of McIntosh County, all the way up to Shakota, and then also in the southern sections of Muskogee County. So basically all along this line, we're going to encourage you to kind of hucker down as these storms start to move eastward here. 
All right, let's go to Bob Roloff. He is in the metro and has caught up with this storm system, which is remarkable because, Bob, this thing is hauling here. Uh, give us an update. What do you have? Hey, Alan. Uh, very briefly with the lightning, we are able to see it lowering hard because of all this rain. But we did have a lowering that came across I-44 ahead of us, and it would have been east of Lewis at the time. So we got to be very cautious right now as to what that's doing because I'm not so sure we're not having some – rotation coming across the south uh, part of the metro area right now. Back to you. Uh, well, let's go to the radar. We'll take a look at that. We'll flip the radar on. Let's zoom in. Go ahead and let's zoom in here. Let's get a little closer in uh, right in through here to the Tulsa County vicinity. Let's just pull off the velocity and take a look because we know that there's just a lot of wind right in through here, especially right in through here, right in this area. You see those really strong winds uh, between a broken arrow Catoosa. Again, that is really strong wind right there. Uh, that is underway. Uh, we can have 80, 90, 100 mile per hour winds. Uh, so regardless, uh, we want to encourage you to take your uh, precautions right now because of these storm cells that are pushing through here. Uh, significant winds, a lot of power uh, lines are down. Uh, we're gonna see power outages continue to increase uh, in some sections here. So just use some caution, take precautions like you would for a tornado because these are really destructive winds that are rolling across the metro right now moving eastward. Uh, so again, that's gonna be around the Claremore vicinity soon, uh, Catoosa and then back down to Broken Arrow. Let's, let's flip it over, let's push it out a little bit. Uh, this goes all the way down to Broken Arrow, back down to Haskell as well. Uh, so destructive winds all in through here. The winds are not quite as strong here from Oshalata Ramona eastward to near the Nowata and Ulaga area, but we still could have some significant wind issues and wind damage there as this continues to move eastward right now. Uh, so let's John. take a look at John, John Durkee, uh, in his uh, update. John, what do you have? I'm at 31st in Mingo. The power is out. And if you can see it right there, we've got a tree into the Arvest Bank that's on the northeast corner. Of course, the bank's closed. No one's here. Can't tell if it did any damage to the structure, but it's completely blocking the entrance to the bank. Back to you, Alan. Okay, appreciate it. Let's go back to the radar. Uh, let's go from Broken Arrow to Tulsa. Let's zoom out just a little bit here. John, if we can. Uh, John, I'm pardon, uh, pardon me, Aaron. Uh, let's put on the shear product. Let's just kind of take a look at the shear product here. That should be showing us a lot of issues, especially running right through here uh, from Catoosa up to Collinsville. Those are very, I mean, there's strong winds all in through here. But there could be really impactful, even stronger winds that be causing a lot of damage issue near Owasso, Collinsville, Catoosa, back down to near Coweta, just to the south of that as well. Uh, let's zoom, zoom out, take a little bit closer look. Again, this is going to go all the way down to Haskell, right in through here. Um, and again, significant wind storm, wind issues that are pushing through Tulsa Metro right now. Uh, if we can take a look at uh, some of our tower cams across the area and uh, just take a look here. We got a couple of them we can, we can look at. Uh, yeah. I bet the downtown area there. Uh, we still have some li lights on here, some power, uh, but you can see it's some dark spots there as well that are, that are definitely uh, being influenced by this storm system. Lots of lightning, frequent cloud to ground lightning and the tower cam is shaking pretty well. Here's the view from Jinx. We're looking right across the Arkansas River. You can see the tower there at ORU, and uh, there's still some lights on there at um, uh, Jinx Riverside area. Uh, also uh, right across the river. If we can take a look at 3T3, uh, there you go, thank you. That's 44 and 75, and um, some pretty strong ones. That's actually a frozen shot right there. Yeah, that's, that's frozen. And this is gonna be the airport. This is, um, uh, Tulsa International, yeah, T4, yeah, we got it up right now. That's Tulsa International. And we have a lot of wind rolling across the area there. So uh, just use some precautions all through here. Dow Archer, Dow Archer is uh, in the heart of this as well. So let's check out Dow's video. Dow, your location and what you're experiencing here. Yeah, Alan, we're out here on Southwest Boulevard, uh, just adjacent to 21st Street. Uh, the road is blocked. In addition to that, we have a tree that's actually being held up by a power pole that could go down at any time. So hopefully we'll get some utility crews out here. But if we have people out on the roadways, I highly encourage them to, to avoid Southwest Boulevard if at all possible. Back to you, Alan. All right. All right. Appreciate it. Uh, and Christy, can you tell me the information again about that location? 36 in Riverside closed both directions because of trees. 
And Bob Roloff had that as well. All right, thank you very much. Christy, our producer, uh, news director, uh, passing that low, uh, information along for us this morning. Bob um, Roloff as well. It's 1236 in the morning. Um, let's pull this radar out just a little bit, Aaron. We're gonna do a storm track. And yeah, that is a very concerning bow echo right in through here. Uh, again, those wind speeds, we're estimating that the winds could go anywhere along this line from 60 to 70 easily, and we may have some 80, 90, near 100 mile per hour winds in this area, especially that little echo component right in through here. Bob, Bob Roloff, let's check out Bob's shot here. And uh, Bob Roloff, we appreciate you your being out this morning. Give us your exact location and again, uh, what the winds are doing right now. Alan, we're headed uh, eastbound on the Broken Arrow Expressway. We just crossed over Memorial, powers out uh, much of this area here. You can see as we're coming up on it, we got vehicles stopping underneath the bridges all over uh, anywhere they can come across a bridge. Uh, we've got a lot of debris blown out on the highways. Uh, we haven't gotten down on the main roads yet, but uh, we're trying to keep up with this as it moves east and south. Okay, Bob, appreciate it. Uh, lost his uh, audio there just for a second, but uh, we got the uh, the majority of that information. So again, if you're in uh, ahead of this, these polygons near the Noata County vicinity, part of Craig County, uh, Rogers County, the Shoto area, just south of Adair. Adair proper is not included yet, but probably will be, but Shoto south of Muskogee. Those storms are moving in your direction right now. They're moving east at about 70 miles an hour. Now, what's happening behind this? Okay, let's, let's take a look about what's happening behind it. This is just rain, lots of lightning, some gusty wind. This is not severe, okay? Pawhuska. Hominy, Pawnee, Yale, Cushing, Manfred, Stillwater, uh, the uh, Wellston, the Stroud area, Oklahoma City. Boy, Oklahoma City was hammered with this thing uh, about uh, an hour, hour and a half or two hours ago. You're currently below severe weather criteria. We are concerned, there's some high resolution data, that there may be storms developing here in between Oklahoma City, Shawnee, and Welty over the next couple of hours. Maybe another small complex of significant storms that could drop east-southeast. So uh, this part here in northeastern Oklahoma may be kind of one and done, but this area right along I-40, we may have another complex that could develop between two, three, and four o'clock and drop down in that area. Back. All right, we've got Vaughn back. All right, Vaughn, good deal. Let's zoom in very quickly. Let's show folks where Vaughn is located here on the uh, radar. So he's again in the metro. Uh, Vaughn, give me an update. What do you have? Yeah, lots of power out all through the metro. Um, I'm on I, uh, 244, uh, just coming up to 169. Looks like power is out here. Um, if, you know, I'd say the winds are 50 miles an hour at least, probably gusts to 60, and uh, blinding rain uh, as with all of these storms. But uh, very difficult travel right now. If you don't have to be out, definitely don't get out, Alan. Back to you. All right, Vaughn, good words of advice. We appreciate it. And again, uh, our trackers are doing a spectacular job keeping up with some of these storms because they're moving quite uh, rapidly, especially in the uh, eastern areas. Uh, but you can see, I mean, they're, they're still not way up here because they just can't catch it, but they're close enough to it that they can still get uh, some pretty good reports here. Uh, let's go to the east of this. Uh, this is the new polygon that's now issued. Let's, let's pull it out, take a look. And uh, Aaron, if you'll do a track, an ETA on this for our friends and neighbors now that are uh, gonna be wondering about when it's all gonna be arriving. So that outline goes from Wagner, showed over the prior area is now included, Adair, Spavanal, J and Chewy. So this storm again, moving east, um, maybe slightly north of east, but just basically east at about 70 miles an hour. This is gonna be severe thunderstorm morning now. Your, your uh, telephones are notifying, the radio's going off. Uh, we're gonna have Central Rogers, Delaware, Adair, Wagner, and Cherokee. Let's go up, um, I'll tell you before we do that, let's take a look around the Uliga area if we can. All right, let's go right in through here. Let's zoom in, let's just clear that out because I think our friends at the Weather Service are gonna trigger a, what is gonna be a tornado warning right in through here. Let's pull this up and take a look at the velocities. Uh, so again, yep, right in through here, right there, right there. Do you see that? In between Collinsville and Uliga. Just popped on there. All right, that's gonna be a tornado warning. So that's gonna be from Uliga, Uliga, like there it is. There's the tornado warning, now just issued. So this is gonna be moving uh, quite rapidly to the east. 
and that's going to be the potential for a storm that's moving northeast at about 35, maybe 40 miles an hour. Could have a tornado with it. Now, some of the storms that have been happening so far this morning have had tornado like winds over a very large area. Uh, but now we do have a tornado warning. And you see that circulation, really tight velocity couplet right in through here. We see the reds and the greens that are coming together. Uh, that's that circulation. And again, it's moving generally east. It, the circulation feature myself just goes slightly north of east, but regardless, you can see that polygon shade. So if you're in that area, that tornado is potentially an opportunity to move in that region, especially just a mile or two near Ulaga South on 169. To Lala, you're north of that, but you're still included in a severe thunderstorm warning, by the way. All right, so you're still included in the potential for 60, 70, 80 mile per hour winds. But here is the actual uh, estimated track there uh, of that tornado warning that's now just been issued by our friends at the National Weather Service. So that's gonna be, again, uh, near Ulaga, moving northeast at about 30, maybe 40 miles an hour. So technically that's going to be for a couple of counties there. Uh, those counties, what would that be, Aaron? That's going to encounter, it looks like maybe the, um, a very small portion of those other counties downstream. Uh, but there's the, the ETA. Take the ETA for us, Aaron. Uh, tell us, folks where that's going to go. Yeah, Ulaga, I mean, it's basically there. As fast as these are moving, Ulaga, Ulaga Lake, that's where it is basically right now. Foil by around 1258. And then as we continue on downstream, we're talking about Chelsea 108, eight air by 118 and then big cabin by 124. Uh, the estimate on this is movement around 40 ish miles per hour on this area of circulation. And you can see the couplet just updated and moved a bit further to the east. Now about three miles due south of Ulaga, uh, moving northeast uh, at around 35 to, let's see, where is that, where did that warning go? Uh, yeah, 35 miles per hour, 35, 40 miles per hour uh, on the movement on that tornado warned uh, portion of that storm uh, as it cranks off to the east northeast there, uh, initially moving kind of directly in a line towards Chelsea uh, and eight air if it continues to hold together. All right, so yeah, it's a couple of counties here. It's mostly in the Rogers County area from Utica north to the lake and foil, but it would include just a small portion of uh, Mays County as well. So again, that's moving northeast 30, 35 miles per hour. That's a tornado warning. Now with that, there's the, the circulation of this very close to Uligal, right? Look what's happening here just to the south. Now this is all severe thunderstorm warning winds and these are destructive winds. Let's, let's zoom, let's go south actually the tornado. Let's go south of the tornado, zoom out. Now check out those winds right there, all right? Those are gonna be like tornado winds uh, from Fair Oaks to the Verdigris area just south of Claremore. Those are really strong winds that are rolling in. Pixel query those winds right there if you will, Aaron, and let's take a look. I mean, those are strong winds. Those are 80, 90 mile per hour winds. And these aren't nearly as far Go off ahead. of the ground as they were 20 or 30 minutes ago when the storms were further west. I mean, this is really close to the radar. There's the radar site yeah. right there. Yeah, so even though we've got a tornado warning, right here, uh, we've got destructive tornado-like winds that are really all along this line. So please take some precautions, not only for that tornado warning, but all along this line with these severe storms and those winds, you see they're bulging out already, already into this area and they're already just about to move into Shoto and Maisie. Uh, so let's uh, take a look, let's kind of zoom out here just really quickly um, and take a look again. There's the tornado warning that's underway uh, near Uliga and then very strong destructive winds south of the tornado warning that could go 80, 90 mile per hour winds. We've had uh, winds estimated at 100 miles per hour with some of these storm cells that have pushed through. Uh, so now, Aaron, let's kind of zoom in and take a look very carefully, closely at that circulation that's gonna be very close to Ulaga. Zoom in and we'll take a look. And again, it's just a mile or two south, but it's already so near L, but just, what is that, one, two, three, about three miles south of Ulaga, moving east at about 35, 40 miles per hour. So obviously you're already sheltering in this area because of those destructive severe thunderstorm warnings that have been issued. But now also for this spin in the atmosphere just around the Ulaga Dam vicinity. Yeah, go ahead, Aaron. There is a community. This would be moving right into the general direction of that, that little community just east of uh, the Ulaga Dam area there. There's a, there's a neighborhood there with a lot of houses. Uh, in that area, just okay. about a mile east of the dam. So obviously you gotta be taking your tornado precautions. All right, so let's zoom out, taking your tornado precautions here, and you're taking really precautions like a tornado all along this line because of these destructive winds. 
Uh, so let's uh, go back here and even behind this, so you can see these winds that are they're bulging out to near Shoto and just southwest of Pryor. Those strong winds extend all the way back behind that uh, near Claremore, uh, uh, south of Claremore to Catoosa and Broken Arrow and, and at least a loft still over the southern areas of Washington County and northern uh, Tulsa County, at least a loft. They may not be all the way down here, but they're still very strong winds. Let's check out Bob Roloff. He again is in the metro with uh, these strong winds that are pushing through right now. Uh, Bob, give us an update. What do you have in your location? Okay, if Bob, um, do we have Bob's audio? There you go. Hey, Alan, can you hear me yeah, now? We've got you now, Bob. Go ahead. Yeah, we're at 40, we're at uh, Garnett and the Broken Air Expressway. We got a tree blown across the road here. We're trying to wait, make our way down to that uh, house that may have people trapped in, and we'll advise on that shortly. Okay, appreciate it. Let's go back to the radar. Let's go back into the tornado warning now. Let's take a look. Let's go back into the tornado warning. Tornado warning. Let's zoom in. Tornado warning continues here. Again, right in through this area. Take your tornado precautions. This is moving east at about 30 miles an hour, right in through here. We just had a story about uh, the birthplace of Will Rogers on the news not too long ago, what, two, three days ago, near and just south of the Uligal Dam, right in through here. The potential for uh, tornado type winds. So you wanna take your tornado precautions, moving to the east now, 30, 35 miles an hour. Uh, let's zoom that out a little bit and uh, we'll show you again, that's the track. It's gonna be right in through this area, right here. Let's uh, pull on the, uh, the, the radar and continue to track it to the east at about 30, 35 miles per hour. So there could be uh, all in through this area, of course, lots of issues with wind and hail. Uh, there's one tornado warning, and again, that's gonna be around the Uligaw vicinity, just to the east, southeast of Uligaw proper now, near Elba, as it continues to move to the east. And uh, that uh, flashing red tornado warning there, that means a tornado confirmed now, four miles southeast of Uligaw, moving east at 55. So when you see a tornado warning on our screen like that, that's flashing, that means a confirmed tornado. Uh, that's four miles southeast of Uligaw, moving east at 55 miles an hour. So let's zoom in here, take a look. We'll zoom back in. It's gonna be right in through here, right, right there. There it is. So that's the tornado that's moving east at about 55 miles an hour, right here. So we're gonna, the weather service is gonna call it a confirmed tornado on the ground in between Elba, so it's just gonna be a little bit, what is that, one, two, three, four, about four miles southeast of Uliga. So Foyle, Bushy Head, this area, this is a little bit north of Sequoia, that is that circulation moving eastward quite rapidly, maybe 50, maybe 60 mile per hour movement to the east here. And uh, that is uh, gonna be the potential for a confirmed tornado. Uh, you see that red polygon flashing and that means that uh, that's a confirmed tornado, even though that circulation looks like it may have just opened up just a little bit, uh, but still uh, uh, need to obviously take your tornado precautions uh, in this area. So here's Uliga proper, just a little bit to the south, right in through here, that's gonna be moving east, northeast. Uh, so take your tornado precautions here. Um, let's zoom out, all right? Uh, and we need to take a look also back down to the south because we have tornado-like winds that are pushing into places like Shoto and Wagner and Fort Gibson and also eventually the prior area, Salina and uh, Lake Hudson, uh, Fort Gibson Lake, and then also eventually in the southern sections of the Grand Lake area. So if you have friends and neighbors eastward, I mean, here, what, what time is it? It's 12.49, it's almost one o'clock in the morning. Uh, worst case scenario for these types of storms to push through, you know, midnight, one, two, three a.m. in the morning. So if you have friends and neighbors or loved ones uh, in this area, you might give them a call and wake them up and say, hey, you need to remain aware. We've got some big storms in the metro that are causing lots of problems, and they're basically moving in your direction. Uh, give them a heads up so they can prepare for that. We still have the tornado warning here. The winds are bulging out around the Shoto vicinity uh, and then back down to Wagner and Fort Gibson. So another polygon has been flo uh, posted here that's gonna include places like Langley, Spavanaugh, uh, Jay, technically not yet, but you will be soon. A little Kansas and Chewy, and then all the way back down. I think Cherokee County is now included. Uh, Aaron, if we'll pull that up just a little bit, yeah. So now again, all along this, there's another severe thunderstorm warning that's gonna be issued there. And that's gonna be also for uh, the, the Tahlequah area as well. Uh, so this is gonna be Sequoia County, Adair, Wagner, uh, Cherokee County, Northeastern Muskogee County. Those storms are moving east now at about 50 miles per hour. Nickel-sized hail, 70 mile per hour wind gust. That's a possibility. 
Uh, so you need to hunker down as those storms start to move there. Uh, so we're still looking at this uh, tornado warning that is going to be underway just a little bit to the east of Ulaga proper now. It's now across the far eastern areas of the county moving east northeast at about 50 to 55 miles per hour. Uh, if we have uh, an opportunity to zoom back in and take a look at that, let's see about that circulation there would be right in through here. So here's Ulaga itself and now we're about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe about eight miles. Uh, it's not quite as pronounced as it was, uh, but still might be doing. In fact, yeah, still a little bit right in through here. We still need to watch here. Um, we're going to watch right in through here as well. Uh, just a little bit to the south of Foil. So again, this is moving to the east as well. So tornado precautions still continue on. And there was uh, some debris signatures that our friends at the National Weather Service were seeing. And that is uh, one, another, one reason why that they issued a tornado, uh, confirmed tornado with that, with that debris signature uh, that uh, we were uh, able to see there using some radar technology. So that's that red polygon that's flashing. And that's the area that the potential tornado here would be right in through here. But there could be some other circulations trying to develop just a little bit south of that as well, continue to move east. Uh, so that circulation now is east of Ulaga itself, slightly east of the Elba vicinity, but very close to Foyle and Bushy Head and then Howard. Uh, so you would need to still take tornado precautions, but you're doing that kind of basically anyway because of all of these storms that are lined up here. Uh, these severe storms that are just continuing to push through. Let's, uh, let's rack that up. Let's put the automa uh, automation, the animation to that, Aaron, and let's see. You can see that thing rolling through. Yep. Well, it's a fast one, isn't it? Yeah, really, really rolling through. That's where the circulation was more pronounced, was right in through here, right there. All right, and now kind of open it up a little bit, but still the potential is here. So we want you to remain aware of that. Uh, let's put the reflectivity back on. Let's zoom out. Uh, you know, obviously we would normally just stay with a tornado warning, but we've got these other storms that are producing tornado-like winds. So we've, we've got to continue to track these as well. And there's other storms that are moving into Arkansas. We're not going to worry too much about those, but from Shakota northward, uh, all along this line, you can see, boy, all of those polygons that are posted, especially right in through here, uh, from Adair to Rose to Chewy to Tahlequah, that is where the more significant potential for you know, widespread 60, 70, 80 mile per hour winds would be a possibility. And there still may be some 80, 90, 100 mile per hour winds right in through here near that bulge that's gonna be near prior to Shoto to Wagner. And there's also additional uh, polygons that are posted right now a little bit more to the south. Uh, so we'll take a look at that in just a second. Aaron's checking out some new information for us uh, and we'll let Aaron do that. And now another severe thunderstorm warning has been issued uh, for the northern area. So again, that's going to go all the way up to Miami, basically. And that's going to include the majority of the northern arm of Grand Lake, Vanita, uh, Chelsea. And again, this is all moving to the east. So um, we're just going to anticipate again that these storms will hold together all across the state line into Arkansas. So up next in the next hour would be like Siloam Springs, Stillwell, Watts, Westville, some of those areas eventually into Arkansas and prepare now for these very strong, potentially destructive type winds as they continue to move uh, eastward across the area. Uh, so let's um, let's zoom in here, take a look again at that tornado circulation feature. And Aaron, if you have any other information that you need to give us here, you go right in, right ahead and do that here. And we'll stop that from looping. Um, and you can see we'll we'll take a look at the velocity data. Here's Lake Ulaga, Ulaga itself, Elba. Again, right in through here. Uh, still somewhat of a circulation there but it looks like it's not quite as, as pronounced as it was maybe about 10 minutes ago, uh, but there is still a tornado warning that is gonna be out for that as well. So we want you to remain aware, again, tornado warning is gonna continue on for that area. Located near Foil, moving northeast at about 40 miles per hour. So from uh, Bushy Head and Foil and Sequoia just to the north, uh, that's moving eastward and again 50 miles an hour. It's moving really fast. City of Ulaga, you're no longer included in the threat even though the polygon is still flashing over you. That threat is right in through here. So Aaron, track it if you can. Uh, again, it's moving really fast here, 50, 55 miles an hour for that circulation. And then uh, Aaron will have the track for us and we'll go and take a look at the track of that big broad area of storm activities pushing eastward. All right, uh, Aaron, give us the update. Yeah, those storms once again are moving northeast at around 50 miles per hour. 
and I'm going to adjust the proximity of what we can look at here to give us a more refined uh, list of towns. So Adair uh, here pretty quickly around 110 Venita by 123 if that continues to hold together uh, and then beyond there Grand Lake by 135. This is starting to get pretty far down the road, but it's just how rapidly that's moving uh, and Bernice and Welch uh, just shy of 140 AM as that continues to move northeast. Now latest update, uh, they did drop the confirmed tag, but they're still saying there's a circulation capable of producing a tornado uh, as that rolls off to the east and looking at the velocities as Alan was just saying that does look to be the case. It's opened up just a bit, uh, but that's what we're looking at right now. And then I did one more thing I wanted to pass along uh, the strong winds down in the Tulsa area a bit earlier. The ASOS station at Tulsa International Airport reported a wind gust uh, of 77 miles per hour. So those are some of those wind speeds as that rolled through the northeast part of the metro. Say, I'm sorry, say that again so everybody can hear that. Say that again. 77 miles per hour at the airport reported by the, the, the station yep. that we get our updates from every hour. Yes, yep. Wow. Lots of wind, lots of wind, and that continues on now. Let's let's put the velocity, uh, I'm sorry, the reflectivity back on. This is what folks are used to seeing right now uh, with most of the radar that we show you here. Uh, so you can kind of see where this is moving. Those new polygons are up. So if you're in Tahlequah, for example, you are now going to prepare for these storms that are moving east at about 50, 55 miles per hour. Showed out, you've got heavy thunderstorms right now that could be producing some wind issues. And then just ahead of the uh, Rose, Little Kansas, the Lake, Jay, take your precautions now. These are going to be significant severe weather makers. Behind it, if you're in Tulsa, all right, if you're in the Tulsa area westward, you're no longer under any severe thunderstorm warning. You're no longer any tornado warning or anything like that. Aaron. Uh down to the southern part of this storm, I have a couple of updates. Uh, Shoto had an 80 mile per hour wind reported by an emergency emergency manager uh, okay. down there, or off to the east, I mean, at Shoto. Uh, and then further to the south, uh, Salisaw had a measured uh, report of a 60 mile per hour wind gust, and they're actually further from that storm. So yeah, that's there's what you were talking about earlier. A lot, lot going on. I know. I know it's 65, right? Okay, all right. Uh, let's take a look at some of our uh, tracker information that we have right now. Let's see what it looks like here. Uh, let's just check out Bob Roloff in his shot. He's uh, in the downtown. It looks like he's closer into the boy. Look at all of that uh, kind of debris that's on the roadway power outages. Uh, there's no lights there. So Bob, what do you have where you're at? What are you seeing right now? Hey, I'm at 31st 169 and there is a lot of damage down in here. Uh, Highway 169 north and southbound is shut down due to power lines. A good portion of 31st Street is closed due to damage and power lines down. Uh, we're trying to make our way east. We're coming up on Garnett. Uh, you can just see here we've got trees in the road and everything else going on. Uh, so, yeah, there's been a lot of damage out in East Tulsa. Back to you, Alan. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to see this in a lot of spots. How about Von Caster? Uh, right now, Vaughn is a, he's actually getting a little closer to that Uliga storm. He's near Claremore. Winds are coming coming up there as well. Vaughn, give us an update. Yeah, I'm on I-44. I'm in between the Claremore and Adair exit. Uh, I'm starting to get wind uh, sustained at 70 um, at times, Alan. So uh, you know this circulation is right to my north and. Uh, I'm telling you, these things may be moving more than 60 miles an hour. They may be moving 80 because uh, I'm not making any headway on this on this storm. Uh, but the winds continue. Back to you. Yeah, they are they are cranking, Vaughn. I mean, they're really picking up, especially right in through here. And I know you're mentioning that storm there near uh, Chelsea. There's Vaughn, but right in through here, they're still cranking eastward now. They're moving 60, maybe 70 miles per hour. And as I told you earlier in the, the night, when, when we start to see those types of velocities, it usually is an indication that those winds are, are just driving that storm almost in that same manner. Uh, so uh, you know, when you see a storm moving 70 miles per hour, you can usually get 70 mile per hour winds at the surface. It just so happens that we've been getting a lot of higher winds uh, near the surface with some of these. We've been having 80, 90. We had 100 mile per hour winds uh, uh, estimated uh, through uh, some of that earlier. Whose shot was that near Claremore? Was that, um, had some damage there. I don't think that was actually Claremore, but somebody had a little bit of damage that we just saw there. Uh, we'll, we'll try to check that out. That was Dow. All right, let's pick up Dow's shot. 
And uh, let's take a look. Dow, what do you have? We just saw some damage that you rolled past there. Where are you at and what are you seeing there? Is Dow on, uh, on the audio there? Yeah, he just may not be able to talk to us at this point. All right, so we'll uh, kind of recenter that yeah, up. Here. There Sorry. you go. Okay, Dow. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we're back over in West Tulsa now. We saw extensive damage on Southwest Boulevard, including some structural damage. We pulled off of that because we were blocking the road there, and we thought we'd seen something else. But most of Southwest Boulevard is blocked completely off. We have a power pole getting ready to fall, and we're going to head back into West Tulsa a little bit because I had seen some damage earlier as well. I thought that we were still in the storm then, so we're headed back that way now to see what we can get on. But I would advise all people to stay out of the Southwest Boulevard area, particularly around 21st Street. Back to you, Alan. All right, appreciate it. Let's go back to the radar. Let's zoom in. We uh, want to take a look again at that tornado warning, even though all along this line, in all reality, you got tornado-like winds. Uh, the potential is here for uh, spin-up that is still underway. And that is the, the tornado polygon area now. This one's not cleared for some reason, but it's this one right in through here. So that's going to be, oh yeah, that's a new circulation. Boy, look at that. That's a new circulation that's developing just a little bit west of Chelsea. So folks in Chelsea, uh, that is a new circulation, new tornado warning right there. Boy, you see that? That's the circulation feature that's going to be moving east, maybe a little bit northeast. So these are the, and Aaron was mentioned in this uh, earlier in the evening, that we have the potential embedded within this line of these quick spin-ups. Uh, so uh, that's, you know. Uh, can easily spin up all along this line, but especially in this feature here, which is kind of on the north side. It's almost like a comma head uh, north of that bow. So it's right in through here. Here's uh, the area from Chelsea back to the west and Howard and Bushy Head. Uliga, even though that polygon is flashing, you're no longer included in tornado warning, uh, but it's right in this area. So if you're from Howard to Chelsea, if you're in Chelsea, that is a tornado warning. And so the tornado is what, one, two, I mean, it's basically in your community right now, all right? It's basically in your community right now. You got to take precautions. This is going to be moving east pretty rapidly, uh, 45, 55 miles per hour. Could be moving even faster than that. Uh, so the way that the radar works and how the scans work, more than likely, uh, this circulation is pretty close into your community right now. So Chelsea, Howard, right in through here. Take tornado precautions. That's a tornado warning that is underway there. Uh, Vaughn was trying to get close to that. I don't know if he's actually going to be able to make it uh, in time because, again, that storm system is moving pretty fast right now. Uh, but, again, that's a tornado warning that's continuing on. Technically, it's uh, for northeastern Rogers and a northwestern part of Mays County. And it goes until, what, about 115, and it's 104 right now. So dealing with lots of wind all along the line. But now another circulation uh, that is around uh, the wildlife management area, uh, County Road 340, Howard State Highway, uh, what is that, 28, right into the city, right into the community of Chelsea. And again, that's moving east. Uh, if you want to put a track on that, just a short-term track, Aaron, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Even though it looks like it's going to be just around Chelsea uh, and Howard that will initially need to take uh, some of those precautions here. He's going to kind of work that up for you here live on the screen. And by the way, again, you're kind of taking precautions anyway, all in through here, because this is a severe thunderstorm warning that along this line, you could have destructive winds anyway. Uh, so folks in Vanita and Blue Jacket, that's a severe thunderstorm warning, but that's the actual circulation. This is a very small circulation. It's moving to the east. It may not survive too much longer, so we'll just kind of confine the track at least right in through here. Aaron, tell us what you know about that. Yeah, that's moving off basically to the east northeast at around 45 50 miles per hour. And if it holds together, it'll be the Chelsea here with, uh, within the next few minutes, uh, within the next two or three minutes. I mean, if, as fast as it's moving, you need to be in your safe place in Chelsea. And then if it holds together, there's always the potential a new circulation or eddy could form. Uh, you'd need to watch out around Big Cabin and Vanita area. Uh, here within the next 20 minutes or so. So that's kind of what we're looking at there is that little area of that storm continues to roll off to the north and east. Uh, and one uh, update I did have from further back to the south around the Collinsville area uh, that I wanted to pass along is that uh, there was some confirmed uh, damage in the Collinsville area one mile south southwest of Collinsville uh, from a spotter uh, of widespread power outages. Uh, with tree limbs down and winds in excess of uh, 70 miles per hour. And uh, also a little further south in the Pegs and Holbert area, we have wind speeds in that 60 to maybe 70 mile per hour range as well. 
uh, and then Jinx, the ASOS a bit earlier, uh, some uh, wind damage uh, in, in Jinx area earlier as well at the Riverside Airport. Uh, so uh, a, lot, a lot of stuff starting to come in as far as damage and wind speed estimates. Uh, so, I mean, even if you're not in this tornado warned area, I mean, just basically uh, you're, you're, you're getting low end tornado winds all up and down that line. Yeah, absolutely. That's why even though that's a tornado warning, it, we've been telling you all night. I mean, basically, you got to take precautions like it's a tornado all in through here because of winds. Uh, Stephen Aries is in the office and he pointed something out here as well. Put the reflectivity on just real fast, uh, Aaron. So you can see this is from Adair to Hudson to Salina. That's the leading edge that's moving right across uh, uh, like Locust Grove. Some of those areas, really strong winds. You, you got to be in your uh, safe spot anyway because of these strong winds that can potentially be from 60, 70, 80 mile per hour. We've had winds higher than that over the metro. Now flip the velocity data on, all right? Flip the velocity data on. And look what's happening right in through here. We have another, at least the very beginning of maybe a little bit of, again, trying to spin up, which uh, has been common on the northern edge. This is almost like a bow echo with that bow that's to the south. We'll show that in a minute. But we're watching right in through here that there may be another circulation that's trying to develop. So that's going to be a little bit south of Adair, south of Green, a little bit south southwest of Strain and then also near the Lake Hudson area. So not quite yet, but it's getting close. So folks near Pensacola, Langley, Ketchum, Spavanaugh, Kenwood, um, especially, you know, even Salina because of the strong winds that are already there. We're watching that little kink right there on the velocity data that might wrap up as well. Those are strong winds now uh, that go all the way to Rose on the highway. Yes, sir, go ahead. That the main line is further to the east around Locust Grove and Rose, but when that part of the storm was near near Inola at the, at the Mezzanet site, there was a 65 mile per hour wind gust. Yeah, there's just you know just a lot of wind with this, a lot a lot of wind. Okay, let's uh, put it on reflectivity and zoom it out, and we'll take a look. Again, all of these look at all those counties now that are highlighted. Again, that's going to be uh, Cherokee County. Uh, we still have the McIntosh County. We're going to check in with Sequoia here in just a second. We got to check his uh, video and see what he's doing in just a minute near Shakota southward. Uh, but you're preparing again for these winds. Do you see this bow right in through here, how that's moving east quite rapidly? And then on this top head part, that is where uh, sometimes we'll see these little features that will try to spin up. And obviously we've seen that uh, often on the last half hour or so with that tornado warning that is still technically underway right now. Uh, for just a couple of more minutes across that uh, area that's kind of flashing there uh, in part of northeastern Rogers and also the northwestern Mace County area. And then just south of that, we're also looking for, uh, you know, maybe uh, the potential there for another little spin up. Uh, so again, all of those uh, warnings that are issued uh, for uh, places like Adair, Cherokee, Delaware, Mays, Rogers, Wagner County, uh, that polygon area there that's, that you can now see on the screen. Uh, again, this is the potential for 80, 90 mile per hour winds that'll just roll across that area. So you gotta start taking your precautions now. You still have time to do that. Uh, so, and again, uh, I'll, we've also been kind of telling you through the evening hours and now into the early morning time period that a lot of your, your communities have storm siren policies that they'll trigger obviously for tornado warnings, but they'll also trigger when the wind speeds have the potential to match or exceed 80 miles per hour. So it's, it's not impossible. In fact, it's likely that a lot of the storm sirens will probably trigger in some of these areas uh, in Cherokee County and Wagner and Delaware and all up and through this area. So I want you to remain aware of that. Uh, let's zoom in real fast. Again, we're gonna go and look at our video from our trackers in just a second, but we wanna watch right in through here. Let's put those velocities back up. So we still have the tornado warning technically here, but that's what we're looking at. Yep, that's another circulation that's trying to develop right in through here. Uh, so this is, this is not a tornado warning uh, at this point, but that's the circulation that, that we're looking at uh, that is trying to spin just a little bit here near Lake Hudson North, Spavanaugh, Langley, Ketchum. Uh, right in through here. It's trying to get its act together a little bit. We'll see what our friends at the Weather Service will do with it. Uh, but it's near Big Cabin South to, uh, to the Stranger. There it is. There's the tornado warning. We're just looking at that. And yep, there's the tornado warning that is now coming on here. So that's going to be near Strang and Pensacola and Langley. And that's moving east. Aaron, what do they have it at? 
Yeah, uh, radar indicated that the yep. potential for a tornado is occurring, moving northeast at 65 miles per hour. Uh, and that's located near Pensacola, once again, yep. as you were yep. saying. Right yep. there, exactly where we were looking at it. Uh, so that is the circulation. Again, it's not a very strong, but it can obviously cause damage. Uh, and, and frankly, it could cause almost the same amount of damage that all along this line could cause as well. Uh, but it is a uh, rotating column of air right in through here. And so that prompts a tornado warning. Uh, so that's the tornado warning that you can see that polygon area there. Aaron, can you go ahead and track that if you can? Yeah, I'll back this. Yeah, just back it up and track it a little bit. And by the way, the other tornado warning for Rogers and, and Mays County, that's no longer going to be in effect. So you see that flashing polygon that uh, Aaron has uh, there that's right under that, that box. That's going to go away. This is now the tornado warning that we're tracking. Aaron, give us an update where it's located and where it's going. You have to move that just a little bit so we can see the box there. There you go. All right, let's check it out, Aaron. All right, once again, that storm, that tornado warm portion of the storm, anyways, moving northeast at 65 miles per hour. And as it tracks along, it's going to be in the Langley area here in a couple of minutes, 118. We're looking at uh, uh, the Disney area just shortly after that. Ketchum, 121. Uh, Bernice by 129 Grove, 134 if it's holding together by that point in time. A lot of times these spin up quick and then they fizzle out and then another one might form near there or somewhere else along the line. So we'll see about Grove, but just be prepared uh, and go ahead and start thinking about your precautions even that far downstream at this point in time. Uh, so that's kind of what we're looking at right now, Alan. Uh, th that's just kind of spun up and we'll see how long it lasts and continue to track it along as it does. But in the meantime, Langley, Disney, Catch them, go ahead and uh, get to your tornado safe place as we speak. All right, clear all that off. Uh, again, that circulation is right there. So it's moving in this direction, but it's also encompassed by a severe thunderstorm warning. And the, the entire severe thunderstorm warning can have winds just as strong as this tornado. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not, but the winds along this entire line can be just as strong as what's happening right here. So we want you again, all in this area to take these severe thunderstorm warnings very seriously. And then we're watching for uh, maybe a little more enhanced area of wind that could cause some issues right in through here near Pensacola and Strang and Spavanaugh and Langley moving east northeast. Let's uh, pull it out. Let's uh, put the reflectivity on very quickly here. Strong winds moving in just south of Jay all the way to Tahlequah. Let's check out some of our trackers. They're trying to find uh, some damage. Let, let's check out Sequoia uh, in the southern areas um, uh, near Shakota. Northern areas of McIntosh County, just to the north of Eufaula. Let's see if uh, we can get Sequoia here. Sequoia, uh, give us an update. It, tell us what you've been experiencing so far down across the southern areas with those storms. What do you have for us? Yeah, uh, Alan, uh, winds like everybody else. Here in Sakota, I saw a lot of power flashes. Uh, there's a lot of debris on the roadways. Um, the whole city was without power right now. Um, what, um, I was trying to find some debris earlier or some stuff earlier. A lot of limbs, limbs all over the roadways. So if people are out, they really need to uh, take you know take their cautions and, and watch what they're doing, or they can run up on something really quick, especially when everything's just dark. All right. Thank you, Ed. All right. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Let's go back to uh, the radar um, right in through here. Let's just zoom in from uh, we're going to talk to Brandon in just a minute, but pull it out all the way down to Pryor, if you would, from Venita all the way to Pryor, because we just got some 70 mile per hour wind reports coming out of the Pryor vicinity, 75, I believe, around Pryor, Salina, Lake, Lake Hudson. So, again, that's the tornado warning. And again, uh, this is not clear for some reason. That's no longer an active tornado warning. This is the active tornado warning right in through here. And we have 75 mile per hour winds that were reported near prior not too long ago. So we want to take tornado precautions here across part of the lake. And now a new severe thunderstorm warning issued as well. Uh, so from Ketchum and Grand Lake and all in this area, you got to take your precautions. Uh, even if this circulation does not uh, continue on, and it, it probably won't, but uh, it, it's there right now, you're going to have winds that would be 60, 70, maybe 80 mile per hour winds. I mean, when these storms move through the metro, we had winds from 89. We had estimated winds at 100 miles per hour 
in the Tulsa Metro in certain spots. So we, we're encouraging you to remain aware of those types of winds as they continue to push east. Uh, Vaughn is here. Let's check out Brandon first if we can. So Brandon is just south of Centralia. Uh, lots of lightning here and uh, Brandon, give us an update. What do you have? You're just a little bit west of Anita, south of Centralia. Yeah, that's right, Alan. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And uh, I don't know how well you're being able to see uh, in our shot here, but we are looking to the southwest uh, where that active uh, tornado warning would be. And uh, we're watching this area, right? I'm paying the camera here. You can see right there. We've been watching that area in the center of the shot for the past five minutes, and we've seen some rising scud coming up into the low, uh, portion of that storm. So we're watching that area very, very closely uh, as it moves off to the east, Alan. Okay, Brandon, we appreciate it. Again, he is uh, near Venita, near uh, Centralia. Vaughn is near Big Cabin. Again, tornado warning, take your precautions here. Near Langley, Ketchum, Grand Lake, Bernice. Small circulation still could be doing damage. That's moving east, northeast at about 50 miles per hour. But all along this line, destructive thunderstorm winds are a possibility as well. Let's check out Vaughn. He's close to Big Cabin. Vaughn, give me an update. Yeah, um, I'm still on I-44, just south of the Big Cabin exit. I just came through the strongest winds I've had all day. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say they were 80 miles an hour. There was all kinds of debris, leaf debris, trash, all of that just it was blowing sideways across I-44. I am now almost out of rain, so I'll be able to get a good visual on any of these areas that have any kind of rotation on them. Uh, back to you, Alan. Okay, appreciate it. Uh, back to the radar. Let's go to velocity and uh, take a look. Let's pull out uh, just a little bit right in through here. These are still really stout winds from Pryor, Jay, Rose, Langley, Spavanaugh, uh, all in through here. Still may have some destructive winds that are going on. Um, bottom end of the wind speeds could be 65, 70. Top ends may be close to 90 miles per hour in some locations. Uh, so there's a shot. Um, let's see here. Where is that uh, tree that damage coming from? Who is that? Dow Archer. Let's, let's take a look at Dow Archer's shot right now. Dow, give us an update. Yeah, Alan, we're out here at 49th West Avenue. There has been extensive damage. Earlier, we saw twisted I-beams. Uh, right now, we're looking at part of a roof off this business. I'm not sure what this business is. It's out here by the, uh, the truck place. I can't remember the name of it right here, 49th West Avenue, but we have seen extensive damage. Uh, those I-beams that were twisted were absolutely unbelievable. Looks like they're holding up about a 50-foot sign. Twisted. All right, thanks very much. Let's go to Vaughn Caster. Vaughn. Put in, uh, let's, let's take what you've got there, Vaughn. You said you're seeing something. Just what do you have? Crossed, yeah, just crossed over right now. Crossing over um, I-44. You can see the debris. It's crossing over I-44 right now. All right, tell, um, tell me what I you... I can see the condensation funnel right across over I-44, just south of the big cabin exit. Um, I see another right ahead of me here. It's crossing, another one crossing right here in front of me. Right here in front of me. All right, we see the winds. Oh, yeah, we okay. see it there. We see it now. Yeah, yep. we see it. Right here. Stay there with it. it. Yep, stay um, with it. Stay with it. Ought, That's going to be near Big Cabin. Some, uh, power flashes. All right, so there's yep. a circulation there. There's a circulation there that's causing lots of wind uh, near Big Cabin. Uh, let's put that velocity, let's put the radar on just very quickly here. You can see that, that the velocity part of the radar right in through here. Yep, see that? Right in through there. That is a very small circulation that's underway, but Vaughn is tracking that. I mean, he is indicating that wind that's really whipping up and he can see that uh, what appears to be maybe a little bit of a funnel trying to drop down right in through here. And that's gonna be near Big Cabin, just a little bit to the north, near and south of Anita. So if you could put Vaughn's shot in the box, that would be good. And uh, there you go, we'll take a look. So there's Vaughn. Now there's the tornado warning that we have officially right in through here near the Langley area. Now that circulation, that's kind of weakened a little bit. There's a new circulation that's developing right in through here in between Big Cabin and just south of the Vanita area, right in through here. That is a potential circulation. Again, that's developing. Vaughn has been reporting, and you just heard him a couple of minutes ago, really strong winds real whipping across the highway. He can see a lowering right in front of him. Let's go back to Vaughn. Let's check it out and see what he's seeing now. Let's put Vaughn's shot up. Let's bring him up. Vaughn, give me an update. 
Vaughn, can you hear us? There yeah, you go. Sorry about that. I looked like I had a conversation funnel all the way to the ground as it crossed I-44. I could see all the way up to the, the base. So I think it was a tornado that crossed. Um, I just went by the big cabin exit. I want to go ahead and exit up here at Benita. Uh, and I think Benita ought to be uh, taking cover right now or anybody um, to the northeast, Afton, Bernice, all of those. Back to you. Yeah, and even if that is kind of up and down, I mean, all in through there, You've got these uh, really strong winds associated with that severe thunderstorm warning that's going on through here. So again, that's Vaughn right in through here. You can see that's a little bit of circulation there that's going on. May have had a funnel that was trying to drop down right in through here. So regardless, you're under severe thunderstorm warning in this region because of 60, 70, 80 mile per hour winds. So you're taking shelter anyway around Venita and uh, Todd and some of those areas in Stella. But that may be again a developing uh, funnel tornado very close to that area. And we're still, this is where we're still watching that circulation right in through here. That's around Langley, Spavanaugh, uh, right in through here near Disney. So you got to be taking your tornado precautions here as well right in this area. That's a tornado warning that's underway. So again, you can see that red polygon region that's underway. That continues to cover basically the Grand Lake area. Uh, Disney, Ketchum, um, Spavanaugh, uh, Cloeta, right in through here, the potential for a circulation developing. And again, you're already taking precautions because you, these strong severe thunderstorms that have been pushing through with extremely high wind rate all through the area. And that seems to be the case as well right now near Grand Lake and Zena. Those are just strong winds ahead of it, but that circulation that's uh, prompting the tornado warning that we have is very close to, again, uh, the Grand Lake area, Ketchum south to Disney and Langley, Spavanaugh area just to the north. And then this is what Vaughn is looking at right in through here. It's not quite as, as um, uh, robust in this general area just to the south of Venita, but he's been watching that. And again, he had that little funnel that tried to drop down there, caused all that strong wind to whip across 44 right in front of him as you saw that. Uh, so again, that circulation, again, it's not quite as tight as, as it was maybe about two or three minutes ago. So at this point, there's no official tornado warning here for Big Cabin or uh, the Venita area. But again, we're watching pretty carefully in that region. This is where the official tornado warning continues on. And this actually looks like it's trying to, to uh, maybe strengthen up just a little bit, a little bit more around Disney and Langley. Uh, let's zoom out because this is not the only issue. Unfortunately, it's all in through here. All of these areas, all of those severe thunderstorm warnings are, are up and running because of significant uh, wind potential uh, between 60, 70, 80, possibility of even 90 mile per hour winds at spots. We're continuing to get reports of uh, easily 50 and 60 mile per hour winds still blowing around the prior vicinity with some of that as it continues to move eastward. And now back behind the system, things have really calmed down here in the Tulsa Metro in Bartlesville and Glenpool and Old Mulgee. Uh, so um, there's, there's no threat at this moment. It probably won't be. I think we're kind of done here in the northeastern part. We're not finished in the southeastern sections. These storms that are organizing right in through here will have the potential to grow and get stronger. We may see another small complex developing here that could brush the I-40 corridor region southward over the next hour and a half to two hours. That could cause, again, more damage issues, more severe thunderstorm warnings uh, for some of these areas that right now are even rain free around the Ada, Pontotoc County area, Seminole, Henrietta, Dustin, McAllister, uh, Kawa. We had severe thunderstorm warnings earlier in the evening for southern Pittsburgh, Latimer, LaFleur, and now you just got some showers and storms. But you're totally not out of the woods yet because of this area that might try to, to redevelop with more significant severe weather as it drops down into your region. Let's go back up to the north. We're going to check out again our uh, folks here that are into the downtown area and through eastern sections of Tulsa County and kind of see what they're seeing with uh, uh, any kind of damage reports. But we do have significant severe weather that's still ongoing right now, obviously in this area. Uh, so what? All right, Brandon, Brandon, let's give you uh, an update. You're getting pretty close uh, to Venita as well, almost in the same area that Vaughn is located. Give us an update, uh, Brandon Wells, near Venita. Yeah, Alan, well, right now we are here at 66 and 60 at the Y, just west of Venita. And uh, if you see on our shots, the stop sign's blowing, really well, blowing around really well. We just had a measured wind gust of 68 miles an hour, or pretty close to it. So, uh, 
the, the winds are very strong. Uh, if you don't get a leading edge tornado, you're definitely going to get the wind damage. So like Juan was saying, to reiterate, if you're in Benita or anywhere to the northeast of this, you really need to take this storm very serious because you're going to have wind damage at the least. Back to you. All right, we appreciate it. And again, that, uh, he is near Venita, not Pensacola. Just to get uh, that straight, it was on the screen. It's Pensacola. He's near Venita. Uh, Vaughn is pretty much in the same area. Let's go to Vaughn very quickly. Vaughn, are you seeing anything again? I mean, a couple of minutes ago, may have had a little condensation funnel near your area. What do you have right now, Vaughn, near Venita? Yeah, I'm just exiting. I'm getting ready to get on 60 and head east. Um, right now, the winds are actually uh, not blowing that hard. Uh, I'm not getting any rain right here in Benita. I'd be on the east side of Benita. So, uh, this is, but this is going to be on top of Benita in no time. So, and anywhere east of this this location. So, people need to take cover with, if, even if it's not a tornado, if it's just these high winds, like Brandon was saying. Back to you. Yeah, absolutely. I totally concur. But you're right there. Uh, Vaughn and Brandon, very close to that area. Vaughn, I saw a condensation funnel kind of drop down about uh, maybe 10 minutes ago. Uh, we'll flip on the radar and the velocity. We still have the tornado warning that's underway here near Grand Lake and uh, the Ketchum area. Let's check that out. Let's put the velocity on Erin and uh, let's check it out. So again, there's the, uh, the, the potential you know, circulation is still kind of underway here. That's going to be around Grand Lake, Ketchum area, southward. Strong winds. There may be another small little area that we're going to watch here for some wind damage issues just to the east of Cloeta, also near and just west of Jay. All of this could be producing really strong damaging wind potential, but especially right through here, that's where the tornado warning technically is underway. Uh, let's zoom it out just a little bit. Um, again, we're watching maybe right in through this general area. It, it may be trying to show signs again, maybe of a little bit of circulation trying to flare back up where Vaughn and Brandon are located. So again, they're right there. If they see anything else, they're going to let us know. That's the tornado warning that we have uh, that is still underway. If you want to do a track on that, Aaron, we can sure do it here. Uh, so this tornado warning still continues on uh, until what, two o'clock? So here we are, it's at 127. Uh, so let's uh, check it out and what do you have here for us? Yeah, that continues to move off to the northeast. The last uh, update as far as speed on that was around 60, 65 miles per hour. So we'll move that off to the northeast at around that time frame and you'll end up in Grove by around 1.38 a.m. Uh, Seneca by 1.55, Neosho if it holds together that long, a little bit after 2 o'clock. And that would be putting it into southwest Missouri or northwest Arkansas. Uh, by that time uh, as that line continues to move off to the east. So uh, take your tornado precautions anywhere along the southern portions of Grand Lake to Grove just in case this thing could rapidly spin back up with these types of scenarios. They, they, they wrap up and develop real quick and then they can dissipate just as quickly and a new one could develop, you know, four miles further down the line or up the line. So just kind of be ready, especially in that area because we pretty consistently in that area seen these little spin up. Uh, rotation areas. All right, uh, let's clear that out and let's put the radar reflectivity back on. Zoom all the way out if we can uh, and look at those uh, new warnings that are going on here. And by the way, uh, Stephen Aarons pointed this out just a minute or two ago to me, all in this area from uh, Eufaula, Muskogee, south of Tahlequah, uh, near Coweta, uh, you're still getting 40, 50, 55 mile per hour winds. These are just environmental winds that are coming off of this major complex of storms right in this general area. Uh, so some of those winds, 30, 40, 50 mile per hour winds that are still underway as far south as places like Red Oak and Wilberton and Stigler and Weber's Falls and Salisaw and Cookson. Uh, and of course, then you get a little bit more to the north into areas of Cherokee County right into here. And that's where you have the potential for some of those, you know, 60, 70, 80 mile per hour type winds. Uh, we're behind it now. We're trying to just kind of see now what is, uh, what, what's going on behind the storm with some damage. Uh, so let's kind of go through and check out some of our, our viewer, our video this morning. Let's check out John Durkee because he seems to be in the Metro itself. And you can see all of those power outages that are going on. Uh, Christy Webb just told me, our news director, um, uh, 56,000 people right now without power around the Tulsa Metro. John Durkee, what do you have for us this morning? Right now I'm at uh, about uh, 40, or about 39th and Memorial, and we have power lines down across Memorial and uh, power poles down. I don't know if you can see that one right there. 
uh, just barely in the shot, but that's laying on the median. It is a power pole down across the roadway just to the uh, north of the Broken Arrow Express, uh, south of the Broken Arrow Expressway. Back to you, Alan. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, boy, this is going to be all over the metro uh, tonight. It, it's going to make for really some tricky driving early tomorrow morning. Uh, so you got to use uh, some precaution if you're out and about uh, early, early tomorrow morning. There's the current power outages. And boy, these numbers we think are going to come up quite a bit. That's 48,000 just in Tulsa County, 2,000 Sepulpa, 400 in Mulkey County. I mean, you can see that. That's 10, what is that, 10,000 there in the Rogers County vicinity. These numbers are probably going to continue to, to come up. Uh, some power outages, they're not showing up yet but we think they probably will, right, across this area. I mean, these are winds that are continuing to howl through eastern Oklahoma into western Arkansas. All right, so that's the quick update. Now, let's zoom back in. Let's take another track on some of these storms. If there's any good news, this is about to move uh, into Arkansas soon. But we're not totally finished for our friends in southeastern Oklahoma, and I'll explain that in a minute. We still have the tornado warning that's underway. We also want to check out these velocity features near Vaughn and near Brandon because of what they were seeing just a couple of minutes ago. So we still have the tornado warning that is uh, underway here, and Aaron just gave us an update on that timeline. But uh, the tornado warning um, is, again, uh, still technically underway for portions of the, the, it looks like maybe the northern Delaware County area uh, that is moving uh, to the northeast, maybe at about 50, maybe 55 miles per hour, that could potentially uh, produce a tornado. So again, if you're in that polygon shaded area, that is going to be where the tornado warning is underway. So we encourage you to take your tornado precautions. Uh, but in all reality, all in this area, we encourage you to take precautions because of these damaging type winds that have been associated with all of these severe storms. So Zena, Grand Lake, Bernice, uh, zoom in and then also get a little closer in here as well from aft and south. So you can see here, Zena, Grand Lake, the Dennis area, Monkey Island. There may be again another little circulation feature trying to develop, uh, which is very close to Vaughn's location. We'll check in with Vaughn in just a second. Um, but again, this is all moving east. But now there's another circulation that's trying to develop right in through here. Regardless, all of this area is considered under a tornado warning right now. Uh, so if you're around the Grand Lake area, Monkey Island, Grove, right on the, the highway here on 59, then moving eastward to Copeland, to Bernice, we encourage you to take your tornado precautions as it's moving eastward. Just outside of that polygon area, again, that's where Vaughn is located. Let's check out Vaughn because, again, what about Vaughn, what, 20, 30 minutes, not even 30 minutes ago, maybe 20 minutes ago, you had a little condensation funnel that drops uh, down. What are you seeing right now as you get closer into Venita? We're going we're gonna to try to check in with Vaughn. Hey, Vaughn. Yeah, we may yeah, not. Yeah, I'm here. I'm oh, here. Okay, thank yeah, you, sir. I'm here. Thank hey, you, sir. Actually, actually, I am uh, east on Highway 60. I've got, I had some really strong southeast winds, and I'm looking now, I turned around, and I'm looking back to the northwest, um, and there is a lowering right here that this may be the area you're talking about it. If you can, if I can get some lightning flashes here, you'll be able to see it. But strong southeast winds blowing into this little lowered area, and I'm telling you what, they were probably 50 or 60 mile an hour southeast winds. So something could be trying to spin up right now. Yeah, right that there. That would be keep it there. Uh, yeah, keep it right there. North of Highway 60. There it is. Yep. North, north, north of Highway 60. Okay. Yep, yeah. There it is. It's a little lowering right there. It's, it doesn't look like it's anything. You know, that's, that's too concerning, but it is a lowering. You can see it. Vaughn's got it there, and the lightning flashes. Yep, and I, I'm still getting the south wind. Now they're turning to the southwest. Okay, now, um, keep, keep your shot yep. right there, Vaughn. Keep that shot. Now let's put the radar velocity on, and that's exactly what Vaughn is seeing. So here, here's Vaughn, and that he, that's what he's looking at right in through here, is that it's trying to, trying to lower a little bit. So, again, watching that carefully, it is included in a severe thunderstorm warning right now. So you need to just take precautions because of those strong severe storm warnings, uh, winds that are going on. Uh, let's now zoom back out. So that's a new severe thunderstorm warning. You can see that's issued. Let's zoom it back out, uh, right in through here. Zoom it all the way back out. There you go. There you go, Aaron. That goes all the way up now to the state line region. So that's gonna be, uh, that's Craig County, Centralia, Welch, Miami, Pitcher, the Fairland area, Wyandotte, and then Venita. 
uh, put the velocity back on, and there it is, boy. All of this is moving east, 50, 60 miles an hour. Could be produced in 70, 80 mile per hour winds. We have the tornado warning that is still underway that is gonna be for the northern areas of Delaware County. That's across the, the Grand Lake area. Take your precautions. Let's go to Bob Roloff's shot. He's in the metro. Some of the aftermath of some of the, uh, the damage that's been pushing through. What do we got going on here, Bob? Yeah, we've got a house fire in an area that's got no power, a lot of trees down. We're not sure how this one started. We've currently got some lightning in the area, but uh, the roof of this was fully involved when we got here. So uh, it's hard to tell if this was a weather head pulled off uh, when we had trees go down on the electrical lines or if we had something else with a lightning strike. Uh, Tulsa Fire's getting it knocked down now, uh, but a few minutes ago, the entire roof was on fire. Back to you. Okay, can you tell, uh, tell us again kind of the general location, of, even if you may not have the exact address, just the general location here? Yeah, it's uh, South 85th East Avenue and East 20, actually it's South 86th East Avenue, East 28th Street. Okay. Uh, just off of 31st of Memorial. All right, 31st of Memorial. That's the way to do it right there. All right, Bob, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Back to the radar. Um, again, the, the strong, severe storms now are away from Tulsa. Uh, southeastern Oklahoma, I need to show you the radar in just a minute because you may not be finished here with severe storms for the morning. Uh, but we're still watching carefully around Vanita and uh, just south of Afton. And then we have the tornado warning. You see that polygon that's shaded there, that red box, that is a tornado warning. Northern Delaware County, we're going to go in and examine that radar velocity in a, just a second. But in all reality, all along that line, you got to be taking precautions like it is a tornado. We'll zoom it on out. And all the way down now, Stillwell, Siloam Springs, Watts, Westville, 70, 80, maybe some 90 mile per hour winds rolling through this area. Back behind it, Muskogee, no longer included in a severe thunderstorm warning. Tahlequah, no longer included in a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, the Poto area, no longer included. Eufaula, McAllister, no longer included. You're still getting pretty strong stout winds out of the west northwest near Weber's Falls. Stigler, you're getting 40 and 50 mile per hour winds. Uh, even though most of the showers and storms are away from you right now, these really strong winds are still whipping through all through east central Oklahoma. McAllister, it is very windy in McAllister right now, but you don't have a severe thunderstorm warning. You have a few showers nearby. You may not be finished in the McAllister area with strong severe storms. And we're gonna go over that, the reason why, in just a second. Let's zoom back in. Let's go straight into that tornado warning there, Aaron. And uh, we'll take a look. You can see that polygon shade that's still up. And that's gonna be encompassing this area. Uh, and then right in through here, that's what we're gonna be watching for the potential circulation. And now let's take a look. So again, it's not nearly as defined as it was maybe 15, 20 minutes ago. Um, we don't see a whole lot here, but it wouldn't take much for it to kind of spin back up. Maybe a little kink here, just a south southwest of Southwest City, uh, maybe a little bit north of the Sycamore area. Uh, and then we're still watching Vaughn uh, right in through here near Afton and Bernice and Copeland. There may be a small circulation trying to develop here, and then just lots of wind. Again, this could be causing wind damage. I mean, this could be called just rolling across the lake right now. So you got to stay away from the, the west walls and windows. You got to be into the interior room of your home. Uh, if you have a storm shelter, obviously you got to be in the storm shelter as well because of this system that's continuing to zip through this area. And we say zip, I mean, it is. Aaron, how fast do you think this thing is moving here? The uh, updates that have been coming through lately uh, show those storm motions uh, moving around uh, 50 miles per hour to the northeast. Uh, that was from the last tornado warning update here. Uh, as the, the, the last warning that was issued. So they're moving to the northeast 50, 60 miles per hour. Uh, and, and they're rapidly kind of moving in the northwest Arkansas and southwest Missouri here uh, as uh, we head over the next 20 minutes. All right, let's zoom it back out. Uh, let's put the, uh, the radar on still. And uh, let's go back down in here. Uh, again, as those big storms rolled through the Cherokee County area, Tahlequah, we've had reports now of 70, what was it, 74 mile per hour winds reported uh, in the Tahlequah vicinity with those storms that rolled through there. Uh, that severe thunderstorm warning now is on the state line. We still have the tornado warning that Aaron just talked about near northern Delaware County. We still have severe thunderstorm warnings. Craig County, the Ottawa County vicinity, 
And now what's going on here across the southern sections? Here's Henrietta, you follow McAllister in the Kiowa vicinity. Right through this general area, you can see it's pretty quiet right now. But this is what we're watching right in through here. There is a complex of storms that may try to redevelop. There's a pretty stout looking storm feature between Ada and Pontotoc County, Holdenville and Shawnee and the Pottawatomie County area. Uh, this may blossom into another small segment of strong severe storms and may drop to the east southeast over the next hour and a half to two hours. So we're going to have to watch it carefully, kind of see what happens because of all these different interactions that we've seen uh, through the early morning hours. But so McAllister, you're still technically included in a severe thunderstorm watch uh, that's going to be underway. Kiowa, Scipio, Calvin, uh, the Dustin area, Henrietta, you can see Sequoia is near uh, Henrietta right now. Let's put on Sequoia's video, just a video. We'll take a look to see what he's looking at right now. Shouldn't be a whole lot, just some rain, some lightning. He's kind of near Henrietta. Uh, so again, that's what we're looking at there. Let's go to Brandon's shot. Brandon is closer into that strong storm activity that is near Vanita. Uh, Brandon, give me an update. What do you have near Vanita right now? Strong, severe storms underway. Yeah, Al, right now we're just getting pelted with uh, heavy rain. Uh, some, some strong winds. I would say they're probably about 50 to 55 in that range. Uh, we're just now getting ready to catch the uh, Will Rogers Turnpike here and bus north on 44. We're, we're buried in the back in the rain, so it's going to take a minute for us to get out ahead of this line. But uh, 55 to mile an hour winds here in the town of Anita right now, Alan. Okay, all right. And then not too far away from Brandon, just a little bit more to the east northeast, Vaughn located closer to Afton, and he's been watching this uh, kind of tricky little circulation feature off and on that tries to drop uh, what we considered almost like a wall cloud there. Uh, there's no tornado warning there, but it's uh, something that we're watching carefully. Vaughn, what can you tell us there? You're getting into Afton this morning. Yeah, I'm just now coming through Afton, and uh, that little feature is still there, um, and uh, it, it actually looks like it's getting a little bit better organized. Uh, but we, I've been experiencing anywhere from 50 to 60 mile an hour winds. Uh, I cannot tell what direction they are right now, though. That's what's bothering me. Uh, I'm coming through the town. So as soon as I get outside of town, I'll be able to tell what direction are, uh, and I'll get back with you. Alan. Okay, you. we appreciate it. Appreciate all of our trackers being out uh, early this morning. They started this afternoon, and they continue to track this all through the area. So the tornado warning. The only tornado warning that we have still is for this very small area here in the northern Delaware County vicinity. Um, so still we encourage you to take your tornado precautions, but in all reality, all in through this area, you got to take precautions because these severe thunderstorms are producing destructive severe thunderstorm winds that are they're similar to a small tornado all along this line. Uh, so let's take a look at that velocity, Aaron, and uh, we'll zoom in here and, uh, and take a look and see what's happening with it. Uh, again, uh, it's not quite as, as, as robust as it has been, but we're, we're watching these little interactions. And Aaron, you talked about this earlier in the evening, how sometimes you can have these little spin-ups on, on the leading edge, especially in this portion of the overall pattern, because that bow echo now is moving through far eastern Oklahoma to western Arkansas. This is kind of on the north side of it. It's not a classic comma head type feature, but it's on the north side. And sometimes we see these little spin-ups here. Northern sections, you get a little bit more of the winds kind of crossing each other and helps them kind of get those spin ups going. And the, the other thing we're starting to see that may be aiding and making them a little less divine is we're starting to get pretty far away from the radar. And, and sometimes these features are a little harder to pick out, you know, higher up in the atmosphere. Uh, but uh, definitely along that leading edge, just uh, from Grove to the east towards Dodge, up towards Copeland. Uh, that's kind of the area that we would be looking for some of these little spin ups to occur. Uh, and then down into portions of southwestern Missouri there to, towards southwest city. Uh, these are going to continue to move northeast at around 50 miles per hour. Uh, one other thing that has updated, I wanted to point out real quick, go right is I'm going to go over to the power outages and the, they have uh, definitely been increasing. My goodness. Tulsa County now up to 72,000. All of the surrounding counties also showing significant power outages. So it's kind of a big deal as far as really not only the sphere of weather, but the results in the wake of the severe weather, even you know an hour after it moves through your location as uh, those power outages can linger, especially if you get this many. That's some of those could take a while to get back on as much work as they might have to do on some of those power poles. Well, that's right, Aaron, and uh, we saw uh, a shot a couple of minutes ago from from Dow Archer and he had power lines in front of him and poles and all sorts of issues. It was just going to make it really tricky. 
uh, for folks trying to travel, not only right now, obviously, but even early tomorrow morning. And tomorrow morning's a big day. I mean, it's Sunday. Lots of folks will head to church early tomorrow morning. Lots of folks will head to the golf course. Uh, they'll be out, you know, trying to enjoy the day. And you may have to put some things on hold uh, in your communities uh, because of some wind damage issues, some power lines, some power. And obviously there's just a lot of people. Unfortunately, we were looking at the data early this morning and it looked like this was gonna end up being kind of a power issue type thing. And unfortunately, that has definitely been the case. Uh, so here we are at 1.46 in the morning. We still have that tornado warning underway. Uh, we're gonna go in and look at our video, uh, our trackers in the Metro in just a second to see what they're seeing. But we still need to take a look at these because these are severe storms and we're still, the potential on this leading edge could still have 70, 80, maybe 90 mile per hour winds in these polygons. So Aaron, if we can zoom in on the radar and get right down closer into this general area from Northern Delaware, uh, especially right into this polygon shaded area. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at this area first. So again, this is gonna be from Copeland uh, to about the Dodge area. And notice our friends at the Weather Service now have really kind of eliminated part of the tornado warning and they're just gonna keep it right in through here. Uh, because of these little jagged areas. Uh, and as Aaron mentioned a couple of minutes ago, it's on this side of the entire complex that you see the potential for more of these little twisted areas right along this leading edge. Let's flip the velocity on and this, this might be a little difficult to see. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit still here. You know, there might be just a little bit of circulation here near Dodge. Uh, there might be one trying to develop around Copeland. I mean, this is very common for this pattern to see this. Now go back to the uh, just regular velocity instead of storm velocity and look at all these. These are really strong winds that are still going on here. Pixel query those winds if you can. Now again, this is really above the surface of the earth at this point. The way that the radar beam is now, uh, as it goes out from the radar, it goes up on the horizon. So some of these winds are way up here above it and they may not be all the way down, but there's still the potential here for some destructive thunderstorm winds all in this area. Uh, so from um, the Grand Lake vicinity southward from Zena and Denison all the way back down to the south. And now let's, let's clear that out and let's go down to the south, even with the velocity still on. And boy, check this out. Now look at this. These are still the indications of very strong winds that are rolling through Westville and Stillwell and Siloam Springs and a little Kansas and Chewy. So these are what we call destructive severe thunderstorm warnings that are underway. And that continues to move to the east. So all in that area, you got to um, you know, use your precautions there with these severe thunderstorms pushing through. Uh, Brandon Wells, uh, you are a little bit more to the north now. What is that? Um, near the Veneta area, just to the northeast of Veneta. Boy, you got some heavy thunderstorm activity. What kind of winds do you have now, Brandon? Alan, if I had to guess, we're getting a 65 mile an hour wind. If I had to guess, I'd have a hard time uh, trying to stay on the road here. I've got blinding rain. That rain is blowing horizontal out of the uh, northwest. Uh, very, very hard. Uh, there might have been a gust near 70 right there. Uh, it's really hard to tell, but it's a lot of heavy rainfall and a lot of heavy, uh, lot of strong wind on uh, 44 here, Alan. Okay, so Brandon, uh, kind of near Afton, a, a little bit to the east of Veneta. He is in a severe thunderstorm. That is Craig County. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning is going to continue on there uh, for at least a little bit longer until about 2, 2.15, and it's 1.50 right now. So you still got to take precautions here. These are winds that can cause some damage. Uh, so these destructive severe thunderstorms, some of these winds are basically on the, on the, the, the same scale as what you would have a weak tornado, basically. So you, you've got to take some precautions all in through here. So here's Brandon and there's the, the community of Afton and you can see Vaughn, here's Fairland and the Copeland area. So this is going to be right in through the Ottawa County vicinity. Uh, so let's check out Vaughn's shot. And again, Vaughn has been kind of in this area. We've had this little lowering off and on in the last 15, 20 minutes that he's been tracking. Do you have a better uh, uh, opportunity to see that right now? Vaughn, what do you have? Yeah, Alan, I'm kind of in a uh, just north of these really strong winds that uh, just went through Grove. I'm headed to Grove. There may be some damage there, so uh, I'm going to go check that out. But right now, you know, fairly, I say calm, but, you know, 30 to 40 mile an hour winds with some heavy rain. Back to you. All right.
Okay, we appreciate it. Uh, we're still looking again at this area. This is kind of the area that goes all the way back down into east central Oklahoma now. That's where the significant severe weather is located. Uh, we only have one tornado warning that's still underway. That's for the northeastern part of the Delaware County area. And uh, that storm cell, basically that segment of the storm cell is moving northeast again 50, maybe 60 miles an hour. So it's going to be right in this general area. So hunker down, stay in your safe spot. Uh, let's flip the velocity on if we can, Aaron, and take a look. Yeah, it's not quite as pronounced, but again, we still have these really strong winds uh, right in through here, and there may still be these little spin-ups that will try to happen right on this general area. So still take tornado precautions here uh, with a very strong winds. This is the base velocity to score to storm relative, and we'll watch it. We'll probably see just a little bit. Yep, right there. Uh, so we're still watching. There's still, that. you see that? That's the, that's the spin that is still prompting that tornado warning that's still underway. It's about to cross over uh, the state line into the county there. And this is what Vaughn's been talking about right in through here. Every once in a while, we, we, we get this little action right in through here that we're just, you know, watching. And occasionally you'll see them tighten up to the point that you're going to get a tornado warning. But right now, that's the only warning and that's going to move out pretty quickly. But you still have strong damaging winds all in through this area. Uh, so let's put the velocity data back on. That tornado warning is going to go, how long is it going to go there? Not too much longer, it looks like, uh, until 2 o'clock. So we're, we're almost finished with that. Let's put the velocity back on, Aaron, if we can. Zoom all the way back out. We'll take it into the metro, actually. I want to show everybody what's happening right now, just in terms of rain shower storms in the metro itself. We still have a lot of lightning. Um, that's one thing that you're going to notice. But this is not severe, but this is still rain with everything that's still coming down in terms of um, you know the issues that we've had. So let's kind of go through and check out some of our trackers and see what they are seeing to show you right now. Uh, John Durkee has been out in the metro. He's has been running across a lot of power lines down and trees down. John, give us your exact location. And obviously we can see some flashing lights there, but what are you seeing? I'm at 71st in Canton in South Tulsa right now, just a little uh, east of Yale. And uh, we're seeing like uh, traffic signs that are blown over. Any construction area, you've got those little orange barrels that are just all over the place, uh, making it very difficult to get to a construction zone. But uh, other than uh, the, the area right around 31st and uh, Memorial, that uh, thing debris that are just going every which direction on the ground, and you kind of wonder, what really went through here? So that may be something for the Weather Service to check out in the next uh, 24 or 36 hours. Back oh, to you. Yeah, they're going to be busy. All kinds of strong, damaging winds that move through. Uh, some embedded circulations, no doubt, across part of the area uh, that has been happening off and on this morning. And boy, look at that. Those numbers continue to climb, Aaron. Uh, give us an update in terms of uh, how many power outages that, that you're seeing there. Yeah, across the metro. I mean, these these have just been steadily climbing as more reports come in. But uh, Tulsa County now at 88,000 reported outages, uh, over around 12,000 in Rogers County, uh, Wagner County 9,500, several counties around 1,000 to 2,000, uh, Payne County 4,000, Osage County 5,000 power outages. Uh, so a lot of power out this uh, this morning. Uh, and, and with this kind of number, this, this could take a while for some of these locations to get put back on. It's, this might not be like a normal deal where a couple hours from now your power flips back on. Uh, this, this, this could take a while for some of these locations, especially where we've had some power uh, poles that have snapped and significant power lines down. Also, rainfall totals, uh, we've, we've seen some mesonet sites up over an inch to an inch and a half. So. Uh, some places have picked up some pretty significant rainfall totals very quickly out of these guys. These were howling through, so uh, in order to get an inch and a half or more in some of these locations, I mean, that's, that's a lot of rain because it didn't take those storms long to pass through. My goodness, yeah. My goodness that is exactly right. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good point, that uh, that type of rain that's been coming through with those storms moving that fast, I and mean, that's a lot of rain. Let's put the radar back up if we can. Uh, and then we want to take you again to where some of the stronger storms are located. We're not finished yet, by the way, in the southern areas. More on that in a minute. Let's go way up here to the far northern part of the state. Uh, the tornado warning 
still technically here. It should go away. And that circulation doesn't look too strong anymore. Let's check out uh, Brandon in between Afton and Fairland, getting closer into the uh, Wyandotte vicinity. Brandon Wells, boy, you're in some heavy thunderstorm activity now. What do you have? Yeah, well, that's right. And here on uh, on 44, there for a minute, we were down to about 10 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour visibility. You couldn't even see the edge of the uh, the hood of the truck. It was, the wind was blowing horizontal so strong. I would have to estimate the wind probably 60 to 65, maybe even stronger than that. It's hard to say without being stopped, but... Uh, you may be able to verify that, but yeah, these winds were uh, whipping across the uh, the highway. We couldn't even see the edge of the the uh, hood, Alan. Okay, Brandon, appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Where is Vaughn located? Vaughn is uh, is kind of closer down into the Jay and Grove vicinity right now. Still some really heavy wind and rain there. Uh, that circulation feature that we've been tracking on the leading edge, and of course, now he's not going to be able to see that because it's just about to move into the Arkansas. But let's check out Vaughn. And uh, Vaughn, give us an update because there still should be some pretty strong winds whipping through that area of northern Delaware County right now. Oh, absolutely. Um, and there's some evidence of it right there. Lots of tree debris in the, uh, in the roadway. I uh, had some power flashes to the north of Grove about five minutes ago as I was coming south on 59. Um, and as I crossed Elbow Bridge, tell you what, that got kind of hairy because it that wind was, uh, it was like Brandon was saying, it was horizontal rain. It was uh, at least 60 miles an hour wind. So definitely uh, still severe warm. Uh, not not tornadic that I've seen recently right here, but we're just getting ready to come into Grove right now, Alan. Back to you. Okay. All right. When you get there, tell us what you find. Uh, holler at us here. Jalen's been doing a great job on the, on the communication with our trackers. And uh, just let Jalen know when you get into Grove because we do not want to know we do want to know uh, what it looks like there uh, in the city. Uh, Aaron Reese has been here all afternoon. Aaron, thanks for, for being here with us. Mm -hmm. Zoom out that radar again. And Stephen Nares is in the office as well. Uh, let's zoom it out and let's, let's take a look because we still have right in through here first. I'm sorry. Uh, we still want to take a look right in through here because those polygon areas, even though you see this heavy reflectivity and typically you think, okay, that's where most of the strong severe storms are located. There's still some really stout winds back behind this. Uh, so around Jay and Grove, south to Little Kansas, Chewy, those areas near Salem Springs, West Salem Springs. If you've never been to the Springs, it's beautiful. Head that way, check it out. Uh, near Gentry and uh, Bentonville. So now that's where severe thunderstorm warnings are continuing to track on, but you still have really strong winds that are associated with this. So this is gonna be kind of a west wind right here, maybe a little bit of a northwest wind and uh, easily 40, 50 miles per hour, even behind this reflectivity area. Uh, there, you're, you, you may not be getting 60, 70, 80 mile per hour winds any longer in this area, but it's still really windy. Uh, so, so hang on to there again. Tahlequah, Cherokee County, you're no longer included in a severe thunderstorm warning, but I'm telling you, those big winds that roll through Cherokee County and Tahlequah, you had some, we think you had some 70, 80 mile per hour winds. You may have had higher winds and um, the power numbers will probably come up uh, in the Cherokee County area and then, uh, or, or those numbers of people without power will probably come up uh, from Tahlequah, Cherokee County eastward. Now, Aaron, let's go back down to the south because we're, we're, we're still watching here uh, pretty carefully. So this area, let's put that in motion. Just put the radar in motion there and let's see what's happening here. But it's just kind of interesting. You can see the thunderstorms now that are developing uh, between Holdenville and Calvin and Gurney near Non southward, that's the Colgate, and then Atoka, the Boggy Depot area is right here. Here's the Kiowa vicinity, McAllister, and Sequoia is doing the right thing. He's now gonna take it and go straight down south on the Indian Nations Turnpike is going to get closer to McAllister because that storm cell is going to be moving eastward and it will have the potential to strengthen a little bit. So that's why I don't think we're totally done this morning, totally finished in the southern areas. And we should be across the northern vicinity. But I would say from around I-40, from Henrietta South to McAllister to Scipio to Stewart, Kiowa, Lehigh, Atoka, Wilberton, Red Oak, Stigler, Kyoto, some of those areas we're still going to have to watch 
for still some strong severe storms that could roll back into your area. At least one more round of that and hopefully that would be just about it. So we'll check out uh, Sequoia's video, not right now, but just in a little bit. Let's go back to the Metro, Aaron, take a look at the radar and kind of see uh, what's happening here. Thankfully, not a lot in terms of precipitation falling. It's about to actually thin out a little bit. Let's check out now some of our trackers and see what they're seeing. Uh, let's go to Bob Roloff. He is in the Metro and uh, no shocker here. There's no, no power. But Bob, what are you seeing in terms of any kind of damage? Um, power lines down, uh, tree limbs. What have you seen so far driving around the Metro? Well, we've got the Broken Air Expressway shut down at Sheridan, power lines down on the highway. 169 north and southbound are shut down at 31st Street, power lines across the highway. I won't even begin to go into how many trees are down or parts of trees are down. Uh, awnings. Awnings are flowing everywhere out here, and just a lot of damage. And this is what we're seeing in the dark. Who knows what we're going to see when the daylight comes. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people out of power, I'm going to guess, for a while. Uh, they may not be a good Father's Day for a whole lot of people. Back to you, Alan. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's Father's Day tomorrow, or today, I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Who else can we, we take a look at here? Um, John Durkee. Let's uh, check out John Durkee. He is near Jinx, it looks like. So John Durkee's video. Uh, there you go. John, good morning. What are you seeing? Yes, good morning, Alan. Uh, right now I'm at uh, uh, the uh, hotel on 71st Street, uh, the Southern Hills Marriott, where uh, a lot of the, the Shelby Mustangs have been uh, parked for the uh, uh, convention or seminar or whatever going on this weekend. And uh, looks like that maybe a couple of them lost windows uh, from the, either the hail or the strong winds. And there is roof debris all over uh, 71st Street just to the west of uh, just, to, just to the west of uh, Lewis. So uh, a lot of damage in this area, not so much with trees, but with just debris scattered everywhere. Back okay. to you. All right. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I, we're probably going to find more of that, you know, off and on through the early morning hours. Is Dal Archer still with us or did we lose his shot? I'm not exactly sure if Dal is still with us or not. Yeah, Dal is still with us. Let's uh, let's see if we can talk to Dal, Dal Archer uh, this morning. Uh, they don't have Dal in the uh, in the control room there. What uh, just uh, we may have his audio, but we'll let, let's pull up Dal's audio if we can. Okay, yeah, Alan, we're out here at 21st and Southwest Boulevard. The road is basically almost completely blocked with trees right now. We also have a couple of leaning power poles. I don't know if you got my shot here or not, um, but I am a little bit concerned. We still have traffic going through here, but we have two poles here that look like they could fall at any time. So I'm hoping that we'll start getting maybe this road shut down because most of it's already shut down anyway just due to the tree damage back to you yeah, okay tell us again we don't have your video shot yet but we're working on that uh we've lost it and folks you can kind of understand with all of this that's been pushing through we've, we've had some uh technical you know issues trying to connect with with the electrical surges and everything that's going on give us that uh, exact address again so folks in the newsroom can hear it and folks also if they happen to be up this morning and and have to be out, you know, where, where that's at. So tell us again, Dal. Okay, Alan, yeah, we're actually just south of 21st and Southwest Boulevard right now. Okay. We have trees down across the road. 21st and, and Southwest. And power poles leaning as well. And so far, we still don't see any power trucks out here. I'm just concerned because we have these power poles that are leaning rather precariously across the road right now. Okay, so that's 21st and Southwest Boulevard. All right, Dal, we appreciate it. Dal, thank you as well for, uh, for jumping in uh, very quickly uh, early this morning with all of these big storms pushing through. Uh, let's go to the radar. Uh, obviously, we're there, but let's kind of zoom out and take a look on the far eastern areas. That's still where we've got some significant storms that are underway for our friends and neighbors that are watching us this morning right across extreme northeastern Oklahoma. 
Uh, so the severe storms, there's no longer a tornado warning again, by the way, that's gone. That's continued to push eastward, and this now is going to be moving into Missouri. So Miami, Fairland, once you get to Miami, a lot of folks won't be able to see us, but just those areas to the south still can watch us a little bit around the Fairland area. So you hunk, hunker down here. You got still the potential for destructive winds that are pushing through uh, near the southern and the central portions of the Ottawa County areas. That's moving to the east northeast as well. And then we still have some fairly strong uh, winds that are going on right now. Uh, also across those uh, far eastern areas uh, that are located uh, generally now across far eastern Oklahoma and western Arkansas. So our friends at the Weather Service will be able to trim some of those um, warnings back now uh, that are, are underway, like right in through here. Those are going to go away soon, but now the focus is going to be right in through here. Still has some pretty stout, stout strong winds. Uh, the areas to the south, let's kind of zoom back in, Aaron, if we can, down to Pittsburgh County, because we want to check out that storm that we were just talking about. Yeah, this is the one that we're going to be watching here. This is why I don't think we're totally finished uh, with some of our severe weather opportunities tonight. This is going to be from McAllister to Kyle Stewart back to Dustin. That's the Indian Nations Turnpike. This is Highway 270 out to the west. So here's the base. Base is located around Savannah in between Savannah and Haywood and some of those areas. Uh, so this storm is moving east. Yeah, probably about 40, maybe 50 miles per hour. It's got a lot of heavy rain, frequent cloud to ground lightning. It's near Allen and Calvin and Holdenville and Wetumpka. It's not severe at this point, but it's got some heavy, heavy rainfall frequent cloud to ground lightning and continues to move to the east. So we do anticipate this is going to move back into McIntosh County, back into the McAllister area, and uh, it could get a little stronger. It might trigger, uh, you know, a severe thunderstorm warning, but right now it looks like that that is just um, kind of a heavy storm uh, that will not trigger a warning, at least at this point, but we'll go in and take a look at that in just a little bit. Uh, so we're, we're about to wind things down here across portions of northern and eastern Oklahoma for a severe thunderstorm threat. Um, the threat will continue on, we think, and maybe for the next hour and a half to two hours across the southern areas from Shakota, Eufaula, Stigler, Robert S. Kerr Reservoir, and you can see Sequoia is in McAllister now. Uh, so let's um, just pull up Sequoia's shot if we can, just to make sure that we still have that all working here. There it is. Yep, he is getting closer into uh, Big Mac. Happens to be my hometown. so. We'll be attracting the storms as they get closer into McAllister. They're still well out to the west. They're about near Stewart, so they're uh, near the western Pittsburgh County line. So you're fine right now in McAllister, uh, but we still may have some storms that'll try to roll back through here in the next, what would you think, Aaron, maybe about a half hour or so? Yeah, probably around a half an hour and a lot of lightning with those, maybe some gusty winds and some pea-sized hail, but right now those aren't severe, uh, at least for now. <laughs> All right, that's the good news there. Let's go back to uh, the northern part of the state here, including the metro, and let's take a look uh, for Tulsa County. And again, here's Bixby Broken Arrow. Uh, we're in the clear here in terms of severe weather. We're not going to have any more at this point. That's good news. Heavy rain still coming down to the east. Uh, Shoto, Muskogee, Tahlequah, you're no longer under severe thunderstorm uh, warnings. Um, Let's, um, because I've not had an opportunity, obviously, in the last 30 or 40 minutes to check out the watch status. Aaron, if we'll check out the watch status to see who's still in the watch and who's not, it's probably going to be the southern areas that are still in the watch. Uh, the northern areas will probably no longer included here. There it is. You can see those counties that are in blue. Those are the watch areas that are still underway. So, again, uh, the watch is in blue. They're, 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 they toggle off the screen. And then the ones that are still on will be in this area right in through here and maybe still across the far southern areas as well uh, for a little bit longer. Uh, so uh, we'll watch again in this far southern area around with Tumka and Holdenville and McAllister. Uh, before we turn you back to regular programming after a very long night here, let's zoom in and let's take a look again at some of our trackers through the area to see uh, one last check here of what they're seeing this morning. And then Aaron, if you'll go back over the power outages, what we know at this point, and then Christy in the control room, uh, if you're hearing anything else in terms of significant damage we need to pass along, let us know. And then if not, uh, we're probably gonna return you back to programming here in about five or 10 minutes or even sooner than that. Uh, and then we'll be, of course, obviously monitoring the storms through the early morning hours. So let's check out Bob Roloff. Uh, Bob is, again, it's not too far away from Tulsa International, it looks like, maybe across the north and eastern sections. Lots of trees down there on your shop, Bob. Yeah, 
down. Uh, we're making our way up and down on the east side, of the northeast side of Tulsa, and uh, it's got a wax pretty good. We're going down to check on the port of some groups off of uh, commercial businesses out around 129th and April. And so we're making our way back there. We're on Garnett right now. But uh, as you saw, there's debris and trees down in this area. Back to you. All right, Bob, appreciate it. Um, how about John Durkee? And John has had some really interesting shots this uh, late night and early morning. And John, the one I remember uh, at first was, it was so calm. Um, <laughs> you, you were waiting there for the storms to get there. And then about five minutes later, we came back to you and it was just blowing and going through the Metro. <laughs> what are you seeing right now? Right now I am in Jinx and uh, it is just nice and peaceful uh, looking for any damage in this uh, part of Tulsa County. But right now, not seeing it, but yeah, it's a lot different than it was at uh, at midnight when I was at 51st and uh, Lewis and it just out of nowhere went from calm to the strong winds. Well, there's a little debris right there in the road and Jinx. Oh yeah, so, we see that, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we got stuff kind of over here in the media and there's a bunch of stuff so it yeah they've got some uh free it's just basically tree stuff but yeah it's all over the place alan it's going to be a it's going to be a mess to get cleaned up after this all right Second. john thank you thank you so much for being out uh late last night and uh, early this morning uh I, we may not have dow archer's video uh, but we may still have dow's audio so we want to talk to dow uh, one more time, Dal, and tell us what you're seeing. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we've got your video now. How about that? You are uh, oh, definitely yeah. got some damage there. Give us an update of your location where you're at, Dal. We've got you up now. Yeah, we, we have seen a, a an extensive amount of damage all along Southwest Boulevard, all the way back to 49th West Avenue in West Tulsa. We're sitting here now at about 23rd in Southwest Boulevard and actually have structural damage on a building here. Uh, concrete blocks are in the roadway. Uh, we have seen numerous power poles down, fences blown down. There has been a great deal of damage over here in West Tulsa. Back to you, Alan. Yeah, when those big winds were whipping through that area, uh, there were anywhere between 80 and 90. We even had estimates of 100 mile per hour winds that were rolling through. And with this type of a system, there can be these little spin ups on the leading edge. So our friends at the Weather Service will, will no doubt will go out and look at some of this data uh, to, or, or damage tomorrow and go, hey, when, did we have a little spin up here on the leading edge or was this all, you know, just that 80, 90, 100 mile per hour wind, straight line damaging winds. Most of this is just going to be that straight line damaging wind that rolled through the area. But they'll take a look at it. They're experts when it comes to damage assessment. They'll be able to tell whether or not maybe we had a little spin up here and there. But had those destructive storms that rolled across the metro. We still have thunderstorms that are underway in the far northern areas. That's going to be um, far northeastern Oklahoma. That's where Brandon Wells is located. Let's check out Brandon's shot. Brandon, your location, where are you located right now? Far northeastern Oklahoma uh, with still some showers and storms that are underway. In the far northern areas where we still have a few severe thunderstorm mornings. Yeah, Alan, well, that's right. We're going to be uh, located here in Ottawa County, I believe. And uh, we're just to, we're on uh, 44, uh, just to the east of Quapaw. Um, the main winds have just now got to our location. There's a tremendous amount of lightning still going on. You can see there in our shot. The rain's starting to uh, slightly increase and pick up in intensity. Uh, but right now, I would say, on average, the winds are probably, right now, currently, uh, 45, 55 miles an hour. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry, Brandon, I was getting some new information that I need to pass along in a second. Let's go to Vaughn Caster very fast. Uh, let's check out Vaughn Caster, Vaughn Schott. Vaughn, good morning. Thank you for being out all day and all night. Lots of tree damage, debris there on the roadway. Your location, what did you see when you're into the Grove area, when you moved through Grove not too long ago? Yeah, I'm on US 59 right now, in between Grove and Jay. Um, uh, the northern part of Grove, they had power, but the southern part did not. The area around the Lowe's and all of that. Once I got across Honey Creek Bridge, uh, there was power again. So there's. I didn't see any structural damage, not saying there hasn't been any around 
I'm, I'm sure there's some boat docks probably got tore up uh, with that strong a wind. And uh, unfortunately, Alan, I think uh, maybe some guys are going to be getting chainsaws for Father's Day instead of what they were going to get. So uh, anyway, we'll, we'll continue down US 59 here and uh, search for some more damage back to you. Okay, we appreciate it. Let's head back to the radar one last time. Uh, we're going to turn you back to programming here uh, just in a second, but let's go back to the radar and center this up into the northern areas near um, near Tulsa to kind of show you what's happening uh, on the radar. So you put Weather 7 up and we'll, we'll be able to do that. If you put uh, Weather 7 up, we'll take a look at the radar uh, and we'll show you again into the Tulsa Metro what's happening right now. Uh, so if you can uh, put, uh, I don't know if you've got Weather 7, yeah, you've got Weather 7 there, but we don't have the radar up at this point. So, uh, well, there you go. Thank you very much. Uh, let's kind of zoom in and let's go back to the Metro. This is what I was listening to uh, also just a couple of minutes ago. Christy Webb, our news director, was telling us that we're now getting reports of a number of gas leaks that are being reported in the Tulsa County vicinity. Uh, so not only do we have power outage issues, we're apparently starting to have some gas leaks being reported. So. Obviously, that can be a pretty tricky situation here. So if you smell gas, make a notification if you can to somebody, let them know what's going on. Uh, be very careful around your, your, your home, especially if you smell a lot of gas, you need to evacuate that and need to get out. Obviously, don't try to you know to start anything that could ignite that. But lots of gas leaks are being reported in the Tulsa County area right now. Bob, Give us an update, please. Bob Roloff, I think, has an update for us. Hey, Bob. Uh, Alan, I talked to you, somebody from Uluga, Tulala EMS. That tornado that was on the ground up by the Uluga Dam actually hit the Hawthorne campsite right by the dam. Did considerable damage up there, but apparently it was a small miracle that with the amount of damage they had, they didn't have any injuries. Uh, to report up there. So that was kind of a small blessing. Back to you, Alan. Okay, so tell us again, Bob, tell us one more time so everybody in the newsroom can hear this. This is going to be the, the tornado warning that we had for the Uliga vicinity uh, in the Rogers County storm. Yep. Tell us again where that was at and the information that you so just received. This is going to be at uh, the Hawthorne Campground, which is at the Uliga Dam, which is going to be east of Uliga. Apparently, that's where the tornado went down through there, did considerable damage, but nobody was injured, even though there's quite a few people camping out there for the Father's Day weekend. So uh, they felt that they were very fortunate with the amount of damage up there that nobody was injured. Okay, well, sorry to hear all of that damage there, but good news that there were no injuries, and that's the best news of all, of course. Uh, through all of this so far uh, and that may change through the early morning hours as we start to get more information in so uh, we'll head back to the radar and then we are going to turn you back to regular programming here so uh, just again use a lot of precaution early on this morning um, it's going to be lots of power lines down lots of trees down we're still getting reports of uh, gas leaks in and around the Tulsa Metro that may continue on in some other locations so just uh, be advised this morning that even though a lot of the heavier showers and storms are moving away, you're still going to have to deal with some of the aftermath. Uh, we're obviously still going to be here in the weather office. Uh, Megan Gold is in. Stephen Nairns is here. Aaron Reeves is here. Jalen Martin. We're watching the thunderstorms, especially in the southern areas, in case those get a little stronger or close to severe again across the far southeastern part of the state near McAllister. But right now, those are below severe criteria, but they are getting closer. And you can see that Sequoia Quentin is there as well. So we're going to be tracking these showers and storms uh, at least for a little bit longer across the far southern and eastern areas. OK, there you go. 218, 219 this morning. It's been a very eventful morning, as you well know. Thank you so much for staying with us here. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to all of our trackers for being out this morning. Uh, stay with the News on 6. We'll keep you advised.